Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome back to another Battle for Arrakis. Should be quite a bit of fun today. Uh, we're going to be playing the Harkonnens, as you guys have voted, so uh, the Big Baron is going to be trying, and certainly better odds with the Harkonnens, I would say. And uh, yeah, we're getting our pods together. It's going to be four pods of four. The winner of each one will be advancing on to a grand final, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's going to be good. So our counselors, we're going to be using Kron. He's very good. Villagers under uh, villages under oppression do construct faster, which isn't the best part of him, but still not bad. Also, uh, villages that are being oppressed that have empty building slots generate manpower, which is actually pretty good. And lastly, the most important thing about him is we do get 50 Solari per killing rebels, which is extremely important for Harkonnen economies, right? Because your villages are going to be constantly rebelling. So having uh, all that free money is very, very good. On top of that, we do have Uman... Kudu, so he's great, um, very good for military play. Uh, he gives you bonus manpower out of the gates, which is really nice for that early game kind of uh, raiding momentum. And he gives you faster recruitment time for your units and villagers or units that are in a region with an active Harkonnen operation gain armor. So this is great, right? You use like combat drugs or anything really, and it's going to be giving your entire army a pretty good stat buff there. So, um, so my pod, we got <laughs> we we juice, gotta love it. Uh, Comrade Gordon on Fremen, and it's going to be Doghead on Carino. Very, some very solid players for sure. It's going to be a very tough pod. Carino, I would say, is probably the biggest threat. Um, although Atreides is very good too. I don't know about the experience level of Wee Wee here, but um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right, all right. Welcome. You want to oppress a village first thing? Uh, first thing you capture it with Kron. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It does allow you to build better. Correct. Yeah. So you can you can build up your buildings a lot faster. It's pretty cool. Definitely not a bad idea. All right, so just gonna check on the Discord, make sure there's no issues with the pods, seeing if I'm getting tagged for any reason, doesn't look like it. I think all the pods have gotten their business together, which is good. So um, if I make top four, then I won't need to use the multicasting, but if I end up getting karate chopped in this pod here, uh, I will be using a technology to cast the, uh, the pods, which is gonna be very, very fun. All right, all right, let's do it. Do you post tournament times? Yeah, no, you just got to be in our Discord. I, I announce them usually like around noon or 1 p.m., uh, one or two days before the event. Probably usually like two days. And um, yeah, gives people a chance to sign up. And yeah, they're limited to 16, so they are smaller events, and you got to be a little bit quick on the draw. Network issue, retry. Okay, let's see. Sometimes that happens, and you just have to remake the pod, which is fine. It happens. Let's see if it, if it goes through here. So it says waiting for server. Um, let me check. Maybe the players are having a little bit of funkiness, including myself. But if it happens again, we will, um, we're going to remake the pod. All right, we're going to remake the pod. Okay, so let me tell them, remaking pod. Remaking pod and remaking pod. Okay, so we're going to try that again. Yeah, it usually doesn't happen twice in a row. But if it does, we can just switch hosts and have somebody else try hosting. It's a peer-to-peer -peer game still. Usually, I haven't had too many issues with lag. So it's, um, yeah, should be okay. All right, let's get Doghead in there and get all the crew. I sent the codes back out. Thankfully, it's pretty quick to restart. It's not like Total War where we have to spend like 10 years rebooting everything, right? Bless the maker and his water. Yeah, well, we're the Harkonnen, so, uh, you know, I guess they, they need water too. All right, so Gordon's on the way back. We got the crew reassembling. Um, I should just I should just go wild card and put like the worm strength, the worms up to like maximum. <laughs> That would be so funny. Oh my god, just slip in like maximum worm strength. Oh man, that would be extremely troll. That would be extremely troll. Got to catch a flight in five hours. Oh man, okay, I got you. We're gonna we're gonna be going about four hours today, I would guess. So hopefully we'll uh, keep you going to your flight, man. And I've been tagged. I haven't been tagged. Looks like everybody else is going smoothly. All right, all right. And how are we looking? Waiting on the last gentleman. <laughs> wee wee. Oh my god, what a name. Hopefully he's not like still in that, that lobby loading into oblivion there. We'll see. Maybe he's still retrying. Who knows? But yeah, we got a little bit of time. Technically, we don't start for another six minutes. Technically. So yeah, Harkonnens have a couple cool win cons. I like them. Um, probably my favorite faction to play overall. They're very good at chom. Probably the best choming faction in the entire game. Um, he's on the... He'll be back. He'll be back, I hope. <laughs> He'll be back, I hope. We could have had someone crash, too. Maybe that was part of the reason. Um, okay, tagging him again. Hopefully he'll join us here. But yeah, Harkonnen's probably some of the best chome in the game. Uh, I would say maybe the best chome faction. Uh, Carino can chome very well. 
and play the finances and the stock market. They're very, very good at that. But I think Harkonnens probably have the best raw income. Uh, other win cons for them, Domination is very hard to win with these days. It seems much harder since they, because um, Demolition units, when they used to attack bases and things, they would strip armor off them, but that doesn't happen anymore. So it's very, very tough. Also, it seems other pods are having some false starts. Yeah, it's very normal, Doghead. It is the nature of the beast, yeah. Yeah, that's normal, sadly. All right, let's fire it off, baby. <laughs> worm eats the bait. Yeah, the worm just comes up under your, your main base and just eats it. Yeah, that'd be pretty great. Um, but yeah, the best choming faction, pretty respectable militaries, honestly. The Harkonnen militaries are very good. Um, they can go fisticuffs with mostly anyone. I think like a fully trained out... Um... Okay, are we starting? I think we are, All right? Yeah, looks like we're starting. Yes. I think a fully tricked out Ekaz army could probably give you some trouble uh, because Ekaz can train those like super elite armies using the special training. But even still, the Harkonnens can attrition them down. They can just keep sending like crappy armies at them and probably wear them down because they do good enough damage. Stealth drones now have armor lowering aura. Yeah, yeah, the stealth drones aren't bad. And they also, when they explode, they do a ton of damage. So you can you can mix them into your front line and they're, uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Oh yeah. Good for manpower? Yeah, I, I'm gonna... Manpower is like is dual purpose, right? You can use it to be aggressive with the military early on, or more importantly, um, you can use manpower to um, to fuel your harvesters, right? So you, if you're rushing like Chome and trying to get like early eco, it really depends on who my neighbor is. If I have a Fremen neighbor, I'm going to be going early military. If I if I don't, if it's Atreides, you know, for example, who's really close to me, I'm, I'm going to be greedier, right? Because Atreides are usually more conservative and they usually don't, um, you know, push out. Oh man, Hadrius, it's been a while since you played, probably, huh? Um, Atreides, yeah, they're still very turtly, but they have... I think it, Atreides might have the best military. Like, if, if you really get to, like, endgame brass tacks, Atreides' armies are scary, scary. On the defense, that is. Even on the offense, though, they're pretty good. All right, so we got the game paused. So what you, you always want to pause when you join these games to make sure everybody's loaded in. So this is standard etiquette for tournaments and also group play. So you, someone just pauses right away, and then you just put a little plus sign, and that's how you let everybody know you're here. So troopers... Maybe the knife chip and shatter. Yeah, classics. Everyone's getting into character. I love it. Um, good luck. Have fun. Let's start it up. So first things first, we need to go discover our spice field, which is down here. And uh, embrace the power of the turtle. Yeah, Atreides are... I, th I think Atreides and Ekaz are the two strongest factions. Um, that's kind of been the meta. Um, oh, I missed, the, I missed the drop there. It's okay. Oh, good village. We get water as Solari, and it's actually a four water village and Plascrete. Okay, this is a very, very good village out of the gates. So usually with Harkonnens, you want to get a lot of troopers whole bunch of them. They're actually pretty good, and they scale well into late game now, um, because the troopers, when they die, they um, they continue fighting after death for four seconds. So you can mix a ton of these guys in, and they, they, they do a lot of work. They're actually very good, I think, so. All right, keep scouting. <laughs> my dune, my Arrakis. Yes, dude, the Baron Chungus comes for Arrakis. He wants it. It's his, and we're going to go with Robin. We're going to go with Glossu, and uh, he's, he's my favorite. I really like his buffs. Um, all right. We have another Ornithopter, so let's fly over here and go an auto-recon. And yes, we have Comrade Gordon on the Fremen, Doghead on uh, Shaddam, and then it's going to be Wee Wee Juice. <laughs> Can't get over that. It's so good. But this is a great village, by the way. This is very, very good. So I'm, I'm happy about this. Ooh, and a rare Minerals and a Spice Field. This is like a, a very, very good start for us. Very, very good, I would say. All right, so let's do this. And first things first, got to get the Spice flowing, or else the Baron will be unhappy. And uh, we have a couple of these laying around. And uh, you always got to rush and still fear. Local dialect is good. It makes villages cheaper to annex, but Instill Fear lets you pillage villages without penalty, so you can capture them later. It's um, it's my favorite strategy for the Harkonnens. All right, and we can uh, we can oppress this, although it is 20 manpower. Um, it will allow us to build quicker, but we're going to do that because it'll build um, it'll build 200% uh, faster. So you can see we're turbo building this building, which is really cool. So we can get our eco going kind of quick. And we have bonus manpower coming in from our characters, right? The heavy hand. Yes, yes. Yeah, Robin running like a coward is my favorite. And that's what he does in this, too. You know, he'll engage and then he'll just flee when things get a little bit ugly. So let's go ahead and get a Plascrete. And um, I believe it's still under oppression, which is great. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and deploy the Harvester. And uh, it's so funny. I almost pillaged that. Okay, we got um, some fuel cells over here. I would like to settle this region here. We have a deep desert and a very narrow peninsula. Oh, wow. This is like an interesting area. So it looks like there's like a very narrow choke point here, which is going to make it kind of hard to attack me. Yeah, it's good, Anakin. Good. Let the hate flow. And you can see the turbo building in this village. It's so good. 
All right, what's it gonna be? And then we just get this water building for our last one. And that village is already like pretty operational. Yeah, that's great. Look at that, we got spice going, we got plascrete going, and life is good. And here we want to get the rare minerals, but we don't have quite enough yet. Uh, it has one building of each type and agent recruit speed. Hey, that ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. All right, so local dialect studies is done. We need to kind of keep scouting before we get our next village. I'm not gonna pillage until Instill Fear is ready, because I want to make sure, although this village kind of sucks. So we could just pillage that one anyways. Um, not a huge deal. It's not the best. <laughs> Brave Sir Robin. <laughs> yeah. It really is him. All right, so the oppression blues are there. Um, let's go ahead and get that. We were able to build out our first village very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and get the rare minerals here. And um, yeah, life's good. So we're going to get this. And then we're going to get Arrakis' Butchers. Work ethics is pretty damn good too, the rush. A lot of the Harkonnen early techs are very, very strong. Very strong indeed. All right, so that village is going to be pillaged here. Let's do this. And this is going to give us manpower. So that'll be one of the first ones we'll grab probably. And um, yes, we need to get more militia in the villages. That is for sure. Must not pillage, I know, I know. It's the Harkonnen way though. It's how you make all your dough. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be hiring for a raid. A little bit of plascrete there. So we're gonna go grab this in the meantime. And um, yeah, this is a really, really nice village here. Really, really nice one. Uh, all right, so no militia there yet. And here, what do we have? We have money and free military tech. I think I want the manpower boost, so we'll probably go for that and just grab this for now, just kind of for the dough. All right, and um, yeah, getting that extra manpower early is really, really nice. I like that. So if we have one building of each type, so we need to get a manpower building here and then a maintenance center here probably. Um, see how we want to expand. All right, so we got an agent, <laughs> my Iraqis. Let's go ahead and take the manpower here. It's going to be seven days till we finish that. Oh, dude, the game is so fun. I love this game. It's I play it almost every day. I play it a lot. Okay, so we have a bit of a haggard region here, and still fear, and then we can do survival training in Arrakis' Butchers, which lets us just absolutely take down rebels uh, and militia. So that's really nice for our faction, right, since we're going to be battling them for most of uh, most of the times. Let's get another heavy here, and um, then here we can go ahead and get a manpower building. Yeah, we can start on that. So a little bit more spice. We've got the Plascrete, and then we also have the money. That's great, and Instill Fear is about to finish, so we can start pillaging. Okay, so we got some good regions here. I don't know what this one is yet, so we're going to kind of play that by ear. Go pillage this bad boy, and uh, yeah, let's get him heading over. We got 16 water. Yeah, what is this region? This could be something good, and then we just throw down a maintenance center like right there, and we're, we're laughing all the way to the bank. If it's a Plascrete region, that would be like really nice, really, really nice. All right, team, let's get it going. Let's uh, beat these guys down. We're going to have an armory upgrade soon. Uh, what do you think of the Hark Mothership? It's it's so good. It's one of the best in the entire game now, actually. The Hark Conan Mothership, it's pretty nuts. We're going to get some militia there. Unfortunately, you might run out of water. I think we're going to kill this guy quick enough that we won't lose the guy. You don't want to lose your troopers early. They cost a lot of manpower, so... Um, all right, let's pillage that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Evil, evil pillaging. And here is going. It's going. The oppression's going to be wearing off soon, so it'll get back to its normal production. All right. And um, we got that, and um, okay, that's a Plasteel region, actually. That's pretty good for Harkonnens. You want to be able to build up your fat empire quickly, so we're going to do that. Yeah, the decimation protocols is nasty. It, it sends your drones in to just go, like, one-shot something. It's, uh, it's really good against enemy heroes and characters. Harvester and work in order. All right, we need to find another spice field, though. The Baron can't really survive on just one, so we're going to build the second um, scout. Let's get our manpower back, and um, we haven't discovered who our neighbor is. We have this like weird choke point up here, and this base is what? Ooh, 50 Plascrete is Solari. That's a good village. We're going to be able to put down an experimental factory right here and make a shit ton of money, which is going to be good. All right, so let me minimize, make sure there's no issues with the pods starting up. It doesn't look like it. Um, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. All right, aces. So no, no drama. No drama. Okay, um, and yeah, the maintenance center needs to go there, but we don't have the tech for the maintenance center yet. Arrakis is butchers first, and then we jam over and get the uh, we get the one that allows us to get maintenance center. So authority gains are cute. Nothing here is really worth our um, our influence. Why do the Atreides have so little in in the way of votes? Oh, I can't see their influence stock. Okay, that's why. Yeah, some funniness. So this one's kind of fun because you could go ninja the middle and be really greedy about it. Um, we'll just like put some votes into this and take the free water for now. It's going to let us be a little bit more efficient at pillaging. So that passes. And um, it looks like Carino really wanted that one. Okay, so Carino's going to be power expanding maybe? 
Okay, we got a Plascrete factory over there. Um, oh, another spice field. Okay, so definitely we're going to be expanding up this way. We need to go take that probably. Although this one we'll take and then, yeah, we can grab that one afterwards. I need to see who's up here. Like who's chilling up there to see who's going to be threatening it. With Harkonnens, you can get away with just two spice fields, but obviously three is the sweet spot. Three is like, yeah, that's money, 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 money. That's great. All right, let's get a couple of you and get another militia here to maximize our efficiency. We can go ahead and get the manpower again. And then we can come and just murder Hobo a lot of these villages nearby. Um, this one is going to be 58, but it's going to go up in cost here. Maybe they rushed non-aggression pact with someone. Yeah, I suspect that's what it is. They probably they probably did a little little alliance shenanigans. So Arrakis' Butchers makes you just absolutely clear through. And what's great is every time you kill a rebel or a militia, you get manpower. So then we go work ethics and we go martial economy after that. What do you need? What do you need? All right, let's get a Plascrete and um, let's get another... I usually like to just go heavies, heavy militia. Um, in my experience, okay, we got five water here too. That's really good. So we're just gonna we're just gonna do that. Obviously, five water is just so nice. And if we can get water sellers at some point, that'd be a nice little uh, nice little gimme there. Uh, all right, let's go start pillaging everything here that we're not going to be taking anytime soon. Um, the fuel cells are nice. We could take those sooner than later, so maybe I won't pillage that. But let's go pillage the other ones. And we, like I said, we have so much water that we're we're chilling. So we're gonna go over here. Arax's Butchers isn't finished. Goku, it's Harkonnen in time. It is. The Harks are coming to get you, dude. Let's go on Arrakis. And uh, let's get a Heavy over here. We got plus one Militia slot, which is actually a really good trait for Harkonnens. It means extra 5% village efficiency. And now we have our main base ready to go. All right, so we could do a Manpower building right out of the gates. I'm going to do a Recruitment Center. Uh, manpower is like everything for Harkonnens early on. And if I decide I want to aggress on somebody early, it's going to be super useful. All right. Yeah, Eric, the Eric Cartman of the Dune universe. He's coming for you. Although, to be fair to the Baron, he's certainly more of like a cunning, um, you know, scheming figure. Like in the in the the Baron is kind of portray, portrayed to be like an intelligent schemer. Uh, I don't. I mean, Cartman Cartman at times in South Park has his moments of like scheming, right? He does. Yeah. So we're gonna have our Labathopter fly around and let's do some pillaging. Yes, and then we can go pillage some other regions. We'll go get that one, and the Labathopter is going to fly route, and we have the extra manpower. Awesome. So now we can get our villages all, all geared out. Um, what else do we have here? This is Militia and Plascrete. Okay, so we can go ahead and get the Maintenance Center here soon. We're going to need to get, um, yeah. What is our Plascrete at? 67 right now? Okay. Could be better. Could be worse. Can't wait to play this game. Uh, make sure to hit... Uh, yeah, man. You got it. You got to get in and play in our events. You got to do it. We have a lot of beginners playing today. We have beginners. We have seasoned, you know, seasoned veterans who are dark lords. Okay, Carino's all the way up there. So I'm kind of off on my own, which makes me think I'm going to take more of a greedy path. Um, probably just go in, and that's right. I need to get the free armory upgrade. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do Morbid Climax. Not that it's very useful early on, but it's just, it's, uh, it's one I'm going to be taking. So I'm just going to get that out of the way. All right, so we continue our pillaging party. We have Arax's Butcher, so we just, like, tear through, uh, tear through the defenders now. Like, absolutely brutal. <laughs> Brutal. And let's go top and get the spice field up here. It's going to be 70, but that's where we're going to go next. Yeah, carbon scheming is pretty great. Yeah, for sure. Man, I haven't watched South Park in ages, but I remember watching that as a kid. Uh, work ethics is the one that gives us manpower and plastic. Arguably, you could do that earlier. We have the Atreides over here, which is going to be Wee Wee Juice. So I think that um, the problem is if I leave Carino alone, Carino's going to be cackling a little bit too hard. You know, Carino is one of those factions that you do not want to leave alone. They can also contest Chome. Uh, let's start buying some Chome of our own, by the way. We need to we need to Chome a little bit. Although with the Baron, you don't need to rush Chome. You you can like usually hit this like power push, and you can then start Choming pretty damn hard. All right, so we need to get knowledge, a couple other things. The manpower building's going to be finishing in the main base. And yeah, that's right. Carino starts with five percent Chome, so um, they're they're always going to be a little bit ahead in that regard. All right, so let's head up here, get the spice field. We got that. So we're going to get martial economy. This is the one that lets us oppress villages, right? So that's uh, very, very good for us. Okay, so what were we going to get here? Um, we could go ahead. That is actually a pretty good region. So we can do a maintenance center right here. And then we're going to do expand this way and get another maintenance center like down here. Oh, wow, we have a bunch of... Yeah, okay, that's, that's a good region too. We are definitely going to want that. Our lives belong to you. And we're going to get several geothermal condensers, too, which is going to be great. Yeah, so I don't want to panic on the Chome thing. You know, you see Carino pushing up, and you're like, oh, man, I need to I need to do something about that, right? But I think we're okay. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of raiding here. Yes, perfect. 
And uh, let's get another heavy over there. Second spice field's gonna be coming alive. And um, where was I gonna do this? We got that. This is if we have one building of each type. So let's go ahead and slap down a knowledge building here and start on that. Sell a little bit more. Take that, okay. And advanced engineering and martial economy will be coming together soon. Let's go ahead and keep scouting here and see the depths of his expansion. Okay, so he hasn't expanded here. And uh, now we need to come down here and see this. Our Labithopter is flying about, looking for spec regions, and it's currently found four of nine. Okay, so we're going to need a little bit more milk there. We could go pillage this. It's a pretty far journey, but I have freaking 48. Oh, oh no, 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 no. No, I accidentally left that. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to take down this raider, and then we'll, we'll get it back in a moment. All right, come on. There we go. Kill that raider. Get that experience. Good. All right. So from here, where do we expand? Probably down here and grab this. And then, ooh, we have the worm nest. Yeah, that's got to be a next priority for us. And we got to fortify and defend that. I think we're going to try and bully the Atreides. Let the Fremen, um, maybe Gordon needs to, I don't know. Doghead is a really, really good player. He's very good. So I, I don't know about Comrade's experience level. Because if he's not, like, you know, experienced with Fremen, he's going to have a hard time versus Doghead. Robin is too good to be a hero. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Robin buffs your range units, which is incredibly nice. All right, let's get that. Get some heavies there immediately, so I don't have to defend that. And we'll come down here, uh, grab the free eco tech. We got the knowledge building popping off here, which is going to be good. I uh, know we're up to six knowledge. I wish there was a Vernius in the game. You know, a little Vernius in action would help. Okay, we're just going to keep this Labithopter flying. I need to make sure I finish the quest. Uh, 300 Solari per controlled village. I have 229. Okay, I'm going to try and get Imperial Missionaries here. I could go for Diplomatic Congress, but Harkonnens, we're not about that. We're about the money, so. And I now have a fair amount of villages, too, so we're going to we're gonna try and steamroll this one just to make some dough. I don't know if we can win it. I think we can. I think we have the most votes. Yeah, I do have the most votes. Okay, so that's going to give us a couple thousand gold. Not much. It'll give us, like, 2k. Yeah, or like, a thousand or something. It's worth it. It's good, because that's another main base building for us, right? Which is uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. We live to serve, master. All right, the worm nest is going to be how much? 121? Okay, so I think we got to do that. Um, Atreides just got non-aggressions with us. All right, very troll. And um, we need to come down, and I could expand towards the worm nest by grabbing this first, but I think we're going to just pillage some of these regions nearby out of the gates here. And um, yeah, we'll pillage this one. Okay, this one's back up for pillaging. So the Atreides have just lured us into a non-aggression pact. We're exploring the Fremen lands now. Um, uh, it's very lore friendly for me to fight the Atreides. At some point, you know, I might decide to go and like pillage some of their bases. Yeah. Our lives belong to you. Our lives belong to you. I love how mustache twirling the Harkonnens are. They're just so haggardly evil. It's so funny. All right. So main base building. We can build another one now. Um, as far as this goes. Uh, yeah, this isn't a bad one to get. Let's go ahead and get this in one of our uh, tier one slots. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah, it's the... Oh, I don't have enough for the intelligence agency. Yet. Okay, never mind. We're going to hang tight on that then. All right, so the Fremen pausing the game. They're scheming something. Who knows? Let's put some manpower here and some manpower here. Get a little bit of that going. So this is statecraft building production, and manpower has one building of each type. Okay, let's get a knowledge building there. That's actually not bad. And um, we can pillage this one, although, I don't know, I, I kind of... Yeah, it'll make it cheaper to take later, so we'll just pillage all these nearby buildings. Atreides will die in the dark? Yeah, they will, but, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I know the pl I know how good Doghead is. So I'm like, I'm a little, you know, a little nervous about that. I'm like kind of watching here. All right. Uh, we need to focus Karina more. He's very good. And Core is strong. I will watch, uh, I will watch the Atreides. Yeah, you see, I'm uh, the Baron is already laying the foundations of his schemes. I'm like trying to get the Fremen to, to watch Carino while I watch, uh, yeah. If you can keep Core honest, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so Comrade Comrade Gordon is, he's on board, you know, he's he's doing it. Let's go and impress this village. It's going to let us build it out quicker, which is going to be really nice. So we get 200% faster build speed, which I love. That's such a nice trait. And then um, we got three water here. We can throw down more Plasteel. Let's pillage this. And um, it looks like we have a little bit more we can grab down here. Then we go pillage this region. That is a Plasteel region. We definitely need to get the Worm's Nest, though. Worm's Nest is just like gods here. That's so good. 
But let's continue our pillaging for now. Oh, I know I have instilled fear. That's why I'm pillaging everything. Yeah, I, it was just a question of do I want to settle it right now or do I want to, want to wait for the devastation to wear off? Um, so yeah, that was that was my only conundrum there. All right, so keep that pillage party going. Let's go ahead and get some gunners. Yes, we need to have a decent little military. Did I finish this? Yes. Great, so that's done. So I got plus three knowledge. I'm up to 12 now, which is good. Comrade, okay, I'm down for this. Uh, he wants Plascrete. No, I need, you know, as an act of good faith, the Baron is going to put his trust in the Fremen, and I'm going to give him some Plasteel. I'm going to do it. All right, because I, I have a lot of Plascrete production, and Intel is actually quite useful. You know, I can get some supply drops and stuff, and uh, we're going to be quite cozy. All right, so the Baron already has a lot of Intel, which is great. Uh, another spice field here. Ooh, getting four spice would be really good. But let's go down and get that worm nest. That's going to be the biggest one. And that's where I'll launch my attacks on the Atreides from. So, um, so yeah. So we got martial economy. We get intelligence network and spying logistics now. And then we can get enhanced questioning if we want to. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and have you scouting. Which faction is the most jacked of all trades? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, Harkonnens are kind of like that, but they're also the best at something. They're the best at, at money making. Money, money, money. Money. All right, let's do the administrative hall. Yes, administrative hall is good. That's going to give us authority production as well as uh, as well as a little bit of income on all our villages. It's a very good one. So soon we're going to get the in the network here. Um, I need to prop up the Fremen. I'm going to see if I can get a trade agreement with the Fremen because that's God's here for me, right? It, for him, it's not as good, but we we're going to see if he wants it. So I just sent him a trade agreement and he accepted it. So that's really good. So what that's going to be doing is that's going to give me 3% um, salary and also just other like passive uh, passive income. So like, look, let me show you. So yeah, I lose a little authority production, but I get three salary in all my villages and I get 3% overall. So that's like a nice boost to my economy right now, which I'm very happy about. All right, so let's head to the worm's nest. We got our big old army and we do have supply drop in case things get ugly. Um, yes, yes, we could earn the trust. That's fine. Intelligence network is finished. So our agent recruit speed is going to be a little bit faster. Uh, Atreides, ECAS is just really good. They're kind of good at everything a little bit. Like their militaries are really good. Their hegemony, uh, hegemony pushing is like the best, second to none. So um, yeah, there's a couple very, very scary things about them. They're, yeah, they're just very solid. You'll probably see this game. Carino's great though. They're kind of good at everything. Um, yeah, Carino's is probably the jack of all trades faction, but they're not even like a journeyman in any of those aspects. They're, they're like the best at many of them. Uh, as well so it's very very frightening thunderbolts and lightning all that good stuff all right so let's get the worm nest and then we get this region next and um we can pillage it for now i suppose uh i don't know if i want to grab the intel this is going to give us yeah let's just get this freebie here so the worm nest we're going to need to get an airfield we probably want to get an airfield up here too so oh no we have the oppression now so we need to oppress all of our um our spice operations so oppress and um we need to get an oppression going there so our Office of the Order did finish a minute ago, and I didn't start on it yet, but I suppose I didn't have the plastic for it, so it's okay. But let's have you get this. All right, great. Let's get some militia out here so it's nice and secret and safe. And, um, yeah, refinery is only 240 here, which is really good. All right, let's go here and here, and then we can have you grab this and grab this. All right, so Landsrad's starting soon. Vernius is good, but Vernius is probably the worst faction of the game. I know that sounds a little bit of a, you know, an oxymoron. It doesn't make sense, but... Vernius is good at assassinating, but they're pretty much mediocre at most of the other aspects of the game. So let's get another spice harvester here at the Worm's Nest. Um, and I have to decide where I'm going to get that experimental factory. Probably between these two spice fields. All right, so this is probably going to get voted on me, I would guess. Um, I'm going to try and vote this on core. Voting markets on core, yeah. Good. <laughs> we got to slow him down. He's probably chumming pretty hard already. So, all right. Yeah, we're just going to go in on Carino here. Carino's at 10% chum. He just bought up to 10% real quick. So, yeah, it's fine. What are prices right now? 1300 We could buy a little bit of chum. All right. Perfect, Anakin. Perfect. Yes, let the scheming flow. Okay, so Spying Logistics will get our agent recruitment speed online. And then from here, we can just go down and get... Um, we could be a little bit greedier. So it begins, yeah. So it begins, yes. Of course. Of course. It's because they respect you. All right. So we got Plascrete here. Uh, this one is being oppressed here in a minute. And this one needs to be oppressed too. So let's get the Office of the Order. 
and started pressing all those. And yeah, I think I'm getting an idea of how I want to like lay everything out. Um, yeah, we don't need to rush that stuff. Let's go down and get the Chome action now. And once we started pressing these um, these villages that are generating for us, yeah, what does this do? Yeah, cheaper building slots is actually really, really good over there. It's very nice. Got a scheme against the Emperor. Yeah, Karino's very good. Um, Harkonnens are good, but they sometimes struggle to find a win con outside of Chome. Uh, in my anecdotal experience, uh, we got a free research over there, so let's go grab that. And um, we're going to go out and continue pillaging. So once he finishes with that, looking good. So let's take the intel, take the soldier, and we'll take the money here. All right. So do we want to buy some more chome? Yeah, we do. We want to we wanna get to 10%, because at 10%, you get a couple nice benefits. Okay, so how long till we can get the spice field? That one has five water, too, which is great. So worm nest is online, which is huge. Uh, we definitely want an airfield down here, so we're going to get an airfield. This is uh, this is where like uh, conflict would begin between myself and the Atreides, if it were to begin. I don't know if it's going to, you know, anytime soon, but it, it is it is the the hot the hot zone there, right? All right, let's go pillaging. We've got a decent early military, considering I'm not like terribly invested into it. Our water is decent, and um, yeah, all's good in the neighborhood, man. We got Plaskreed over here. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, manpower. Yeah, Offices of the Order eat up a lot of manpower. They eat up a whole bunch. And now we can go ahead and get the, um, yeah, the Intelligence Agency. Uh, yeah, we already have really good agent recruit speed. Do we really need that right now? Until I get Spying Mastery, I don't know if it's worth it. So we're going to hang tight. Harkonnens also get intel from pillaging, which makes them pretty good assassination, uh, pretty good as an assassination faction. So it's pretty darn respectable. Uh, Choman, yeah, we're not like booming on the Chom yet, but we will soon. Once we get these upgrades... And then we capture this and get an experimental factory down there. That's going to be prime time. So now we can go and get this. And then we need to get this next. And we get those um, those fuel cells and we're we're good to go. Yeah, there's another one up there. Carino likes the base drop, yeah? So they could base drop right next to our main base. So eventually we should capture these so that doesn't happen. It's pretty shoal when that does happen. Um, yeah, let's see here. Oh, the military development is cheaper, is, is off right now. That's true. I should take advantage of that. Yeah, I just noticed it. So the military development is uh, is still going. Let's do a supply drop here. Are we going to need it? I don't know. I have 23 water at the moment. Uh, we're going to want an airfield down here probably. Although it looks like we can't build one at the moment. So that's fine. A little supply droppage to make sure we don't run into any drama. Let's get a berserker down here. Uh, airfield is going to be necessary up here too. But that's a lot to spend. All right. So we got another agent. Let's get him on Chome. Our income's decent considering. I mean, our passive income isn't, but our overall pillaging income is good. Let's get this. For how many, uh, for how many already have passive hedge? Look at look at him trying to politic. The, the the emperor of all people trying to trying to blame others, you know? All right. So we need to get more ornithopters and assign them to our harvesters to get the uh, safe harvesting crews going. Yeah, we, we need to. All right, so Office of the Order. Yeah, we need to be oppressing every single one of our spice fields. Because that's where you make, like, most of your money. That's how you get Big Choman. I can see you making 9.6. Oh, man. Okay. Wow. He's doing it already, huh? Yes. We need them to, like, all dislike each other and fight. While we just chome. Oh, he's keep EMP. Yeah, I know. Vernius, like, the fact that EMP counters, like, the entire faction of Vernius really makes me sad. All right. So, let's go ahead and get this. And we're going to go ahead and press this village. And that's going to give us 200% uh, build speed, which I love that. That's so nice. It's kind of similar to the Atreides in some ways. Yeah. But we're going to need to get more manpower buildings here soon. All right. So, up top, our uh, defenders were able to defeat the raiders. Good. That's going to be done in a moment. We got mechanization and recruitment initiatives. Main base. Uh, we don't have, like, any fancy chome branch stuff we can do. Um, I think we probably should get the research center here. Uh, I mean, the hedge gains, we can always sneak that up in the late game to surprise people. Let's just get the intelligence agency for now. And then we go get this region next. It's 84, and we held off that raid up top, no problem. And now here, we can get the fuel cells, and then we can get the other fuel cells here. And then that should be pretty good in terms of geothermal condensers, which is going to give us uh, quite a bit. Harkonnens are very fun. They're fun and they're formidable, too. It's, it's like, Vernius is fun, but they're not very strong. Arconans are fun and they're like mid-tier, you know, so it's a, it's it's always cool because you're not perceived as the biggest threat usually, but you can be pretty threatening, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a nice uh, sweet spot for those guys. So we can get a special region down there, but I want to get the experimental furnace right here. That's where I want that. So that's probably what we'll do next. So we're going to continue pillaging. You can see our income is, is climbing a little bit, which is great. We're at 230 right now. 
And um, now we can get the experimental furnace down here. Where is that? That is going to be, uh, yeah, we need 10. So we just need to get a little bit more. So when we take this, we should be a-okay. All right, so per military building, we definitely want to get some manpower while we're just chilling. Because manpower is going to run a little bit low for us the more that we're uh, oppressing, you know. Lore friendly Carino. I know, he is. Yeah, Dockhead's, he's very, very good too, so. He's very good. All right, almost missed that mission. Free 30. Uh, let's keep choming, 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 choming. That's what the Baron does. And so, once we get some military tech, we'll for sure get aggressive. Um, the Fremen, I think, are going to be fighting Carino, which makes sense. Like, Fremen typically will fight their neighbor. Um, that, that's like the best and only way to really play Fremen, in my opinion. You need to be kind of aggro, right? You can't, you can't be friendly. Um, although you can go for political Fremen. Yeah, we got a lot of military training in. Parallel training is pretty essential because it allows you to train your hero. Uh, unlimited, no. So, Hadri's intel has been heavily nerfed. It's much harder to get intel. Hearts can still spam it, but not as much as they did before. Um, yeah. It's a, the, there's been a ton of changes, Hadri's. There's been a ton. 17.6. Okay, you know, Doghead can complain about that, but he is also capable of dealing with it. So, we're gonna, we're gonna let him deal with that. Alright, so... Oh, interesting. So, this is gonna dictate our... I'm actually gonna vote for both of these and try and get them to pass. And then I can just switch off, off. Oh, although we want parallel training to finish so we can get Robin. Although we don't need Robin that early. We can even get him in the next cycle. Who's at 10k hedge right now? Um, Atreides is, so they probably have Gurney already, although it depends if they have that tech. Um, all right, so let's just support, decline this, because I want the Fremen to be, yeah, I want the Fremen to be having some success in their militaries. Um, looking at Carino, he's got a couple territories. He's expanding, you know, as Carino normally does. Uh, our plus greed is plus 88, could be better. Um, we could, oh, this region's actually pretty good. It has scientists too. So we might want to get that. That's actually a pretty good region. We live to serve. We live to serve. All right. What do you Come down here, homie. And let's go ahead and press this so it builds faster. And then we can get our experimental furnace. And that's when we're going to start popping off. Um, what got slowed down? Statecraft? Okay, that's fine. Statecraft got slowed. Let's go ahead and get you on Landsrad. Get some Landsrad levels going. I'm going to take this because it has scientists and, you know, and Plascrete, which is really good. So we're going to go ahead and grab that if possible. And fuel cells are going to finish here in a second. It's being oppressed. And it's per military building. So then we can just get another one of these. Yes. Good, and this is going to cost 101 to annex. Oh, we're still a ways off that, so we'll just pillage that for now. All right, so here we can get the experimental furnace soon. We just need to save some plascrete. A little pillaging going. It's always always good for you. Uh, chum prices are kind of steep right now. Um, let's wait for them to go down a little bit before we buy. Checking here to make sure there's no issues with the pods. Doesn't look like it. Looks like everybody's playing, which is great. So, awesome, awesome. And we have another spice field here. Yeah, I kind of want to grab that. It's a little greedy. Kind of want to just like build my turtle first. Water's getting low. Oh, but that's just because of a rebellion, right? Uh, this region has five water too. We need to take advantage of that. Actually, we can do that after. We can do that after the experimental furnace. So this is going to give us a massive amount of production on this territory and this territory. It's going to increase it by, I think, 20%, is it, or 30%? Let's just double check that. Yeah, it's 30%. So two spice fields are going to be getting a big boost, which you gotta love. All right, let's continue pillaging. Let's go here. Um, yeah, and that's going to also increase the production of plascrete we have, right? Yes, good, good. We have like no water right now, but I do have a supply drop, so it's okay. Yeah, the rebellions can screw up your water. Turn teaches me that you can potato many things and still win. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely, you can. A lot of this game, you know, it's easy to make mistakes. That's for damn sure. All right, so we need to get some armory upgrades for the devastators. Um, let's see. I, I, Red Fluid is nice. I'm going to wait and see who I end up fighting before I invest in those technologies, I think. Yeah, we're going to do it like that. And it looks like the re Rebellions are being smashed. And what's good about the Rebels is when they get killed, it um, it gives you money with uh, with this faction. So, so we'll go pillage this next. We're going to just kind of continue on our, uh, our merry way. Uh, that's going to pop off. That's going to finish soon. Looking good. We got this, and then that's a oh, plastic factory limit too. Yeah, but this is the one I want. It has scientists. It's so nice. It's very, very nice. You, you. How could you root against me? Of all, of in, even for the emperor, dude. You want the emperor to win? Karina's so evil, dude. They're, that's like when the villains win. The Baron is like he's like Santa Claus on Arrakis. You know, you gotta, you gotta pull for him. All right, so we got the pillage off. We're making a little bit of dough. 
We're going to continue pillaging here. And uh, yeah, water is back up to 14. That's good. So, you know, could be worse. Um, we got an airfield here. I don't know what's on that territory. This is a nice one, but that's going to put me on the border of Carino. Yeah, it's a little bit of a little bit of a aggressive move to say the least. Yeah, parallel training, and then we go down and get the chum stuff. Yeah, probably need to get some some scientist action going. We're hurting a little bit in terms of research. Like our research is very slow. I wish I had a Vernius ally right now. Uh, all right. Let's grab that. Uh, yeah, we, actually, we can just take the research check there. Yeah, it's probably fine. The free eco. Let's do it. Unassigned agents. Let's get you on Chom. And for the main base building, how do we want to develop this? Um, this one's pretty good. The the Mason Guild. Yeah, that one's pretty good for our opponents. Very, very nice kind of industry play. We see the Atreides expanding outward. Hopefully, the Fremen will keep Carino honest. Um, Carino's sitting at 12% Chom, so they are buying a little bit. Um, prices are so damn high right now. I'm kind of waiting for them to go down a little bit, but we'll see if they ever do. All right. And um, we've cleaned out another village. The pillaging is going very well. And the experimental factory is now up. So the amount of production we're going to be getting in these two villages is so sweet. What we need to do is get these spice buildings, too. We need to get the uh, spice silos. Yeah, we need to get those, and we need to get one um, here, too. We can even build it in this region. All right. So back up we go. Let's go deal with this. Oh, that was a rebellion um, from the oppression. So do we have water here? We do. We have water in most of our big regions that we have the five supply in. We got 110. Uh, and this region is going to be free to take in eight days. Okay, so it's still a little while. Still a little bit of time. Okay, so water should come back up for that, right? There's no way we're in the negative right now. No supply regeneration. Okay, so they're still going to heal, which is good. A little bit of H2O here, so let's just slap this down. Cool. And um, we're back up to seven, so let's let the boys heal. And um, yes, he is on my border now. He's He's got a monitoring station and a missile battery. I love it. He's so ready for this. <laughs> hey, look at that. So it looks like we have a... And I'm going to get a Toxic Vapors going right now, too. Just in case somebody wants to attack me, it's really nice to have that. Because you could just be like, no, you're, you're not attacking me. Not today. Okay, so we've pillaged all these regions, and um, this one's going to be how many more days? Six more days until I can get that? Okay. The spice field's going to be ready soon. Let's go pillage the middle. I think we can make it there with supply drops. It looks like there's a uh, siege over here, and Harkonnens love to pillage sieges. It's very, very good. It's very, very good. Okay, chome prices are not great, but there is three people playing chome, so it's a little bit tough. You know, the more people playing chome, the harder it is as a uh, win con, right? All right, so who wants something? Okay, Gordon, I'm down to party with. He wants Plascrete. Um, need it at the moment. Yeah, I, I traded him before, but I, I need the Plascrete. You know, I need it. Chome integration is really good. You can get the Chome branch. Uh, the middle is obviously 162. And um, all right, so let's get the free Ecotech. We're going to need that. And it looks like the Emperor is coming. He's, he's coming to party. Uh, I don't think he's coming down to fight. He could beat me right now, though. His army is definitely a little stronger than mine. But we're going to try and get this pillage off. Let's hold on the edge, and we got it. Cool. He's chasing me pretty hard, dude. Yeah, he wants it. All right, let's get into this region. <laughs> he came for that pillage, but he was he was too slow. All right, so main base building. Uh, anything we want to get here. Yeah, I would like to get the Chome Branch soon, if possible. Our income is already very good. Oh, look at that. Carino breaking the truce with me. The evil Carino. Yeah, extra fiendish, I dare say. So 219, 200, 194, and 324. So I'm not going to be able to win any of these. Um, all factions suffer, so the Emperor is probably going to switch this to everybody. All right. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So I'm just going to decline this. And I think this is dear to the minor houses, so we just put one vote into that, and then we just do that. Okay, that's fine. All right, buddy. How are we looking? We're at 10% chum now, which is great. So we are now getting the benefits of being a board member, which means we get influence and we can train mercs. Um, also, I can get Glossy Robin now. So Robin's coming, baby. The beast is here. My lord. My lord. Here he is. He's ready to go. Oh, that was uh, Fremen. I almost attacked their ornithopter there. That would have been unfortunate. All right. So let's go here and get the, uh, the spice gathering. And probably should start on the mothership soon, too. 
I'm gonna put one on counter intel just to be safe. I don't, I don't know what funny business is going on. Maybe the Atreides are thinking of assassinating me, but you know, you never know, you never know. So we're gonna be careful. Um, all right, so let's pillage this. And then we go down and grab this territory and power build that one. And Chome Branch is now ready, so that's gonna give us a big Solari boost. And this is when the Baron starts cackling financially, right? We should be able to Chome ahead. Yeah. We should be able to chum ahead of some of these guys. And, um, all right, so what armory upgrades do we want to get? Yeah, while in combat. So red fluid's pretty good. Um, and we don't have too many other units at this point. So I think we're okay. Let's get supply drops. And um, let's go grab this territory. Okay. So Robin gives you a free militia in all your villages too, which is really good. So that's an extra 5% production that kind of goes under the radar. Chum prices are low, but yeah, we're still out buying a lot of folks. Obviously, getting to 30% would be pretty good. But we want to get true craning program and then chum support, and then after that, we can go full in on military and attack. That's going to be the plan. We'll see if it works out for us, So It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Uh, we got an airfield here. We can get a listening post, perhaps. That's right. We're going to look for sieges. Uh, was it here? No, it must be, must, must be in the next region over. All right, let's take that. That's going to be our scientist village, so that's going to buff up our... Uh, our, our goodness. Yeah, it's going to give us some knowledge, which we certainly desperately need. And we need to fully build our villages too, by the way, because um, hmm, what do we want to build here? What do we even need? We could just get a little water. We have that. We have good Plascrete here, so we can go Plascrete there. Our economy is good enough, and we'll adjust it later and, and destroy some Plascrete buildings and whatnot. Our Conan bases are pretty good at dealing with rebels and raids and things like that. It's the brave Sir Robin, yes. He's coming. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the scientist trait going. We're going to impress this village. That'll give us 200% um, build speed there. Okay, where else do we want to go? Carino might expand on us, but I don't want to expand towards them. There's another Imperial base right here, which makes spice harvesting there very dangerous. Uh, we can go ahead and get more crew, more crew, and um, you're all crewed out. So let's grab some of our dudes and put them in safe mode, and then you can be in safe mode too if you want to. Okay. And then you, we need to get you in safe mode too, and we can do this, great. And we can get one more ornithopter to go fly around and kind of scout things out. Uh, airfields, we have one down here. We need to get a double missile turret layout, I think. That's gonna be pretty important here, um, if possible. All right, so oh, this region's still oppressed, so we need to take advantage of the build speed. I always forget to do that. All right, so that's gonna be scientisting time, and then we need to get somewhere to build our big airfield. So we'll do this, and we can do the spacing guild branch. Okay. Looking all right. This is still building out. And yeah, we have the infrastructure control now, so we need to spam like as many buildings as we possibly can. Okay, water's a little bit low. Let's go, we can go pillage though, it's fine. The water will come back soon. It's just because we're uh, dealing with rebellions or something somewhere. Okay, so that's done. Command post is mandatory. And um, yeah, you gotta take that one. It looks like Carino's gonna be taking that, which makes me think I might need to fight them. He's got Captain Arsham there. I'm not like super invested in military right now though, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. But um, yeah, could I take him is the question. I don't know, that's a, that's a dodgy one. Let's go ahead and pillage this for now and then pull back. Yeah, well, uh, well we don't want to fight yet, we're not ready. Now it would be kind of stupid to fight. Is he taking that or is he just like standing there? I'm not sure what he's doing. All right, so we can go and pillage this. We have 149, so we could actually take this region. Although it is going to make us a little bit more vulnerable against the Atreides assassinations if they decide to do that to me. I do already have agents on counter intel though, which is good. So that's that's going for us. Um, we have the intelligence agency, so our agent recruitment is going along. Let's pop this so we don't lose anyone there. And um, all right, so we got you and um, Plascrete is pretty good, but water is not. So let's get some H2O here. We might need to get the water building actually in our main base. Uh... Yeah, we can we can just raid this for now. That's gonna be fine. Uh, do we go on counter intel or do we go into lands rat? Arrakis is always good. Atreides could be trying to scheme against me though. Um, I wish I could see what levels he was. You know, I wish I could. All right, so for you guys, let's just get the parrying arm guards. I think. Yeah, I usually like to just get the damage reduction on them. Let's get the free eco tech. And um, crew training program is done, and then chome integration is on the way. That one's really essential for Harkonnen, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of rush that. Okay, I want to get this. We do not have an airfield up here, which is very potato. So we need an airfield up here, so we can defend that. And I, I would like to get that. And then, man, there's so many greedy techs I want to get, but I'm not quite able to get them. Not quite able to do it. 
So we do not have water in this region. That actually is a five water region. So that's going to help us a lot. Let's get this. And um, that is a four water region. So we'll get that too. Okay. So that's going to solve our water problem for now. You trust the emperor? Do you really? Our conans are really good at detecting operations though, because you can sacrifice agents for cell search and you can like instantly cell search. So, um, you know, they are tooled to deal with that a little bit. Um, this is a very, very bold take right here. This one might be a little bit safer. It just has money per, um, per building. So we're just going to grab this region, kind of play it safe. And do we have a maintenance center here? Um, we will soon. All right. So we're going to get a maintenance center right here, plop that down. And that should help with all of our centralized regions. All right. Shai Halud is eyeing us here, but we have safe mode on. So it should be able to get away. Let's get our harvesters on fully operational chonk mode. Good. And the Baron's legions, they, they amass, they grow. They're getting there. All right. Let's take that. Main base building. Um, so do we still have the cheap buildings? We do. So we probably need training slots. It's just too good not to take. Like being able to produce armies that quick is big. All right. So we take that. And um, this region is if we have one building of each type. So how are we doing on manpower? Manpower is pretty respectable, but we can get a little bit more probably. Because when we get into like hard conflicts, having that like big, big boon of manpower is going to be good. Uh, Choman time. Let's show them. We're at 13%. You know, there's several people contesting Chom, so probably... Oh, yes, a siege. Hell yeah. So we're going to annihilate that thing later. Let's go ahead and do this and get manpower here. Okay. And what do we want to do? Speaker of the Council? I'm actually eligible for that, which is really funny. Uh, 318. Oh, my God. I'm almost like... Uh, vote me for Speaker to keep it from Atreides. I can't get gov anyways. Crap lands. Okay, so I'm I'm scheming here. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Can't. Okay, so we're gonna oppose that. I thought I was eligible. Oh, that's for speaker. Okay, so we're gonna put like 200 votes into that. We'll put like 230. Oppose it. Yeah. Trades didn't even try for that. I was trying to weasel out like uh you know a method for myself there, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't gonna happen. I have this like lingering feeling. So I got gear regs. Uh, who did I get gear regged by? Oh, by the Atreides. Okay. So maybe they're thinking about attacking me or something. I don't know. Yeah. So we wouldn't attack them while we're gear regged, obviously. That's just super haggard. Uh, let's suppress this village. That's going to give us building speed. And um, here we're looking pretty good also. Main base is building out. Let's go ahead and have you scout. And we can just have these guys go grab random stuff around the empire. All right. Cool, man. Cool. It's going. It's all coming together slowly but surely. The great plans. Uh, yes, we, we have currently 700 income. That's pretty good. I mean, that's like classic Baron, right? And, uh, let's just get you. So we're just going to get like some income buildings in this village just to trigger that. The Baron would never admit to a mistake. That's true. Yeah. Just say it was a mind game, not a mistake. That's, that's, that's actually, actually a good call. So chump support and then enhanced questioning is really good. We probably have to get that because we, with Baron, you need to be spamming, um, need to be spamming quite a bit. Okay, so that's good. This is looking good. We can get our last building here. We should be getting intel from that village now. And um, what do we want to throw down? We could get a research station. It's kind of cute. Um, we could just get the... Research station will be nice. It actually will be nice. The Atreides aren't going to attack us. They're just going to sit in their base probably. So that's good for us. And um, as far as this goes, we have water here. We could get another Plasterite, but I think our Plasteel is fine. So let's just get knowledge. And let's continue pillaging. Although we do have 96. We have a lot. We, have a lot. we can grab this. What does this give? Re resource. Yeah, it gives us a little bit. Mm. The special region I like a little bit more. It is a little hostile. But um, overall, I think that's the way. So he's just grabbing stuff around the old empire. We're not being attacked anywhere at the moment. As far as I can tell. Renegades have arrived. Okay, so we got Renegades. Unfortunately, they're far away from us. And Space and Guild, we can start trading our politics for ship parts because we really, really do need that. I'm just going to take this because I, I don't want to be sitting on a bunch right now. I don't want to be sitting on it. Oh, man, we really need that knowledge, though. We really need that knowledge. Our knowledge is so bad. We're researching so slow. It feels so slow. What are the Fremen doing? I have no idea what they're doing. Um, the Atreides army looks... Is he Gurney? Yeah, he's got Gurney Halleck. Gurney, is, Gurney and Robin fighting is going to be... Um, or Raven, however the hell you say his name. Uh, those guys are going to be duking it out. And it looks like we're losing a region down there, so we need to go deal with that. All right, so let's get you. Uh, we don't really... Yeah, we can put them at least on that a little bit of lands right here. And for now, we need to fly down here. I don't know how we lost that. 
Yeah, it must be the Fremen siege. So we need to we need to pull a, a, a movie and go pillage that siege. That's for sure. Even with the five militia we lost that, I'm kind of surprised. Okay, was there fighting going on there? There was. All right, let's get a heavy. Park banking 7k. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see what he's at. Of course I am. That is one of my only win cons. Probably not possible because three of you are buying so much. I have to I have to crush the shitty politics, you know. The Walmart politics that are coming at me here, I have to have to keep them in check. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, it's really expensive right now. It's really expensive. Um all right. So this region up here, let's get some heavies there. It's a good thing we got so much going on. Sadly no water. So let's just get a little bit of this. And um, here we have the money per eco building. We can throw down a maintenance center, I guess, but I think the maintenance center here pretty much hits everything, so it's kind of pointless. Um, we could do a spice silo. That would touch this region, which is nice. And then we could actually like fix out that region with something else. So we could do this and then just get like a knowledge building there or something. Yeah, that's gonna be good. All right, so that's a nice little touch up there. Um, aside from this, we could get the knowledge and hedge gains. The water we might need to get, but I think we're okay. We're kind of sitting somewhat comfortable now. Probably get these two, perhaps. Um, harvester crew economy, yeah, that's pretty good. Harvester works isn't bad for like just going balls deep on the chome, right? Ay ay ay, choices, choices, choices. It ain't easy, my friends. It ain't easy being a schemer. But we 100% need the interrogation center. Why fight when we can just be friends? Yeah, see, the they know. I'm not going to attack while I have a military penalty, though. That's just too haggard. So enhanced questioning is really good. And then we can get adrenaline addiction. And um, I suspect he's going to try and assassinate me. I don't know why. I'm just getting those. I'm getting that like tingling, you know, spider senses. This, my spidey senses are tingling. So we're going to put a second one on counter intel. Yeah, doghead in his games is always yes, of course. Hey, so that's some people's style. You know, they'll, 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 you know, it's like watching, uh, it's like watching soccer. You know, when people flop and shit, that's like the same, same kind of style. And it's very good. It's very good. You got to put seeds of doubt in people's minds, right? Get some of these, get some Cerberus. Cerberus are pretty rad. Um, all right, so let's get the upgrades for the Cerberus. Uh, all right, splitting the two unchained upon death. That's pretty good. I like that one. It's very heavy metal. And um, main base building. I'm not sure how we want to build this out yet. I'm, I'm still scheming. We definitely need the interrogation center, so we're probably going to go ahead and get this. Um, what's our, our... Yeah, we're behind people here, so we're going to go ahead and get that. How much is he making? Let's see here. Uh, I can tell you. I am making 450 at the moment. Don't let Carino trick you. This is how he plays. He is the Dark Lord. Okay. I'm, I'm doing my Baron counter politics right now. I could, I could even do like a master politic and just like, you know, send him a bunch of money. I should probably buy a little bit of chome just to like keep people from like being so accusatory with me of like banking money. Um, the Fremen coming across the map. Yeah, Doghead's expanding out. He's going to, I mean, the, they need to keep him honest. Or else he's just going to straight up win. Uh, water in this region sucks. We could do some manpower stuff. Uh, this is neighboring an enemy region, so we could get some intel here. Not a bad idea. Our opponents get very, very good passive intel. I let other people convince you attack line. I'll be more careful this time. Harks are really good, but they don't win as easy as Carino. Okay, I'm trying to like explain to this gentleman here. Water Cellars is basically useless for me. Um, I could vote this on to the Atreides to keep it away from... Oh, Atreides are going to win it anyways, so yeah. There's not a whole lot we can do. Not a whole lot. I, I mean, economy developments, I'll try and get some lands rad. And um, yeah, there's no sense in, I mean, who do I who do I vote this on? Atreides? Keep it away from Carino? Sure. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be attacking Atreides soon anyway, so. Um, economy developments are slowed, that's fine. So enhanced questioning is in full effect. Let's go ahead and impress this village so it can build faster. Uh, this one, we need to fully build our villages, right? We need to fully build them out. So we'll get a plasteel building there. 
You have upkeep of 16, which is kind of rough, but eventually I'll delete my plasteel buildings and switch them out for other things since I'm more or less developed here. Baron, yeah, the Emperor is, is pretty evil too, though, to be fair. The Baron is, like, more obviously evil. The Baron is, like, you know, in the books, the, there's, like, a, a bit about how, like, the Emperor loves Duke Leto like a son, but he's like, I'm just going to murder him and all his family anyways. That's, like, true evil. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the Baron, he's at least he's direct about it. You know, you, there's a Conley. You, he, they know. And Trades, uh, I will attack them soon. Keep, uh... Keep eyes on core. I am setting up against the trades. We're ready, Baron. All right. Uh, if that works for you. Yeah, I mean, I could try and take on Karina. I don't know how that's going to go. Um, I don't know. I feel like I could probably take on the Atreides a little bit easier than a Carino with like a main base right here, but okay. For you, Baron. Focus core. He needs to be attacking Carino a little bit sooner, though. Um, it's certainly taking taking some time. Savage cleansing is is also a very good win con. We need need to get so we'll get adrenaline and then geothermal condensers, and then we're we're chilling. All right, let's get a knowledge building here. Do this. Main base is coming together, interrogation center, and um, let's go down here. That siege is gonna pay soon. Yeah, Karino is pretty, pretty evil for sure. Hmm. Get them. If I can kill the trades, we can 2v1 core, then you and I can fight it out to see who wins. That's one of my favorite ways to politic, you know? Yeah, it's one of my favorite ways. But, you know, he might turn on me. There's no guarantees, right? So let's go ahead and get combat drugs. Uh, it's a very, very good one. Manpower we don't really need, but we're going to need it once we start fighting. That's for damn sure. We got the research going. We're at 26, which is pretty good for Harkonnens. Um, yeah, can I take him yet, though? I don't have the double armory slot. He says it works for him. Yeah, works for him. Okay. And um, looking up top, I do have enough to take that, but I, I think I'm just going to try and take the Atreides bases and expand towards them. Okay, that's going well. So we're going to leave here because it's a little obvious that I'm just sitting here. Fully built villages do give us benefits, um, so we need to fully build all our villages. So this one has what? Um, yeah, we pretty much have all the goodies here, so let's get this. And do we have a spy silo here yet? We don't, actually, so that's very newbie, so I need to get that going. That's for Harkonnens. is very, very important. All right. Come on, from an attack core, and then... Yeah, I'm going to attack soon. Once this finishes, Adrenaline Addiction, it's war. Um, do we have the command post? We do. And then I think I can get the... Um, I think I'm going to get military in these last two, because that'll give us armor to my units, which is pretty good. I think they have four armor. Going up to five is pretty. It's pretty nice little increase, right? Uh, all right, so we're at 18 water. We have this. I can't really, like... These are all essential buildings. I would love to have a military base here, but sadly, I can't at the moment. Uh, let's buy some chome. We're up to 15%. We're choming it. Man, I've been playing so much Vernius lately, and I've just been like a hobo. I've just been like broke the entire time. This is like such a nice change of pace. Um, hmm. Can get this. And then we can throw down another slot there. Yeah, most of the villages are getting fully built out, which is going to increase our economy. And this is uh, this is going to give us intel for sustained combat. Then we So we get this. Then we can go ahead and get Spying Mastery afterwards. Uh, so we get Geothermal, and then we get Spying Mastery. For you, Baron. Uh, nice. I will hit his South Spice now. Okay, that's actually too good of an opportunity to pass up on. To you. Keep at him. So I'm going to hit this Spice Field. It's stupid for me not to. Like with that intel, you know? So the Brave, brave Sir Robin is going to go up here and uh, take care of this. So he beat Carino's army, and we're we're still at peace with the Atreides. So he's probably feeling comfortable. Am I at peace with you too? That's weird. Okay. Well, anyways, not for long, buddy. Costs a hundred to break that with him, which is pretty annoying. But he tried to attack me earlier, so to be fair, he deserves this. I was literally just pillaging, and he broke peace and came at me came at me like a honey badger. So, so we're gonna go ahead and shut down the spice field here to try and slow him down. The Baron is going to just get the Spice Field. And the Atreides will be there. They'll be there waiting for us. He's just sitting at his base anyways. Um, all right. So, Robin, I don't need to use his ability right now. Okay. Looking okay. Looking fine. 
So we've gotten that. So let's go ahead and take this spice field if we can. And destroy all the buildings just in case we fail, right? Okay, and we can get a military base here too to help out in the neighboring conflicts. This is good. This is going to slow him down a little bit. This is going to slow him down. The Baron scheming is, is going well. Uh, let's get the barracks here. Yeah, I think we need to go into military. I think we need to go into military. Break truce? I did. I did break the truce. All right, so are we being raided anywhere? Doesn't really look like it. I think we're chilling. Um, we got going to have a military base here soon. I suspect he won't be able to build up and come and get me as easily. Yeah, the red fluid thing, is he losing HP still? Yeah, he is because he's fighting. I wonder if he's going to lose HP just kind of sitting here. Okay, so like we want the spice field, right? Like that's a really really nice grab for us. So we're gonna we're gonna do it. We can rebuild everything. Uh, let's grab all you guys and have you guys go heal because the red fluid is doing damage to them. I think it's like buggy work sometimes. Yeah, we're gonna go heal them though. Oh no, he's coming to fight. Okay, here he comes. So he's got a little army here. Hopefully we can destroy a spice field. I think we can. Did we destroy it yet? Not quite. Is he gonna actually fight me? He's coming. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. All right, let's try it. And Robin's going to go ahead and use his buffs. And um, we're going to go ahead and try and shut down some range units here. And see how the brave Sir Robin does. No idea how this is going, but we need to just keep him alive. And we can go tie down you. We can tie down you. And Robin is going to just get back. We don't want him to get eaten, so we're going to kind of pull back here. Uh, we could do the... Is he stuck? I can't move him. Where is he? Okay, there he goes. Perfect. He's going to get away. Yeah, so his army was still pretty strong. And most of our army was pretty low tier anyway, so we need to just update it. Uh, toxic Vapors could be used. Okay. He pushed me back. I did some damage, though. Okay. So, scheming with the Fremen. Ooh. Look at that. On House Harkonnen. The Smuggler Bounty. It would be a shame if I voted on myself. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to get spice marketed here. Oh, that sucks. Well, we might as well get some money out of it. No. Vote me, guys. I understand. Yeah, I have my second gear slot now, too. I need to I need to get everyone all pimped out. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Attack speed, health and combat. Oh, man. Come on. What's going on here? Oh, my God. Am I going to lose Robin now? Probably. Oh my god, he let him get away. Wow, it's very fortunate. He could have chased me into my territory, but it's a little dangerous. All right, so assigned agents. Uh, let's go ahead and get you going on here and you going on here. Okay. The brave Sir Robin escapes once again. All right, so armory slot. Uh, yeah, red fluid is good. I, I like the all-in kind of style on these guys. It's very fun. Attack speed, and for you, you do attack speed. We're just going to go all-in on the, the murder hobo DPS and make these guys very tanky. Yeah. That's going to be the idea. We almost killed the Spice Harvester. I should have just gone all in and done it. But the Fremen are going to keep him honest. I think. You know, I think the Fremen are going to kind of keep a watchful eye on him. All right, so let's get some of you guys. and some. I like having basic troopers in your army because of their staying power. I think it's very good. Uh -huh, and Sleeper Agent's cool. Yeah, we could probably beat the Karina army if we fight again, I suspect. Um, how is the Atreides doing? We 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 here. What is he even doing? Is he banking votes? Like, he's only got 91 votes. I don't even know what the Atreides are doing. They're just sitting on a lot of money. So I feel like if we just keep bullying Carino, Atreides isn't going to be as scary. It makes me suspect maybe an assassination though. So we should probably fine tune that. Geothermal, and then we get spying mastery, and then savage cleansing after that. Yeah, and then we're then we're all good. I'll keep coming at Carino though. I think that's the play. We need to just get anti-assassination tech here. Um, so let's cut this. Okay, we're gonna cut that. We're gonna get stealth detection in case there's assassins. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut this knowledge hub. And we're gonna get a missile turret. We need to be careful against assassinations, right? We can start cutting plascrete buildings and getting the anti-assassination tech. This is like a mistake I, I often make. I don't do that. So um, we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. And uh, I think we have enough intel passively, so I think we're okay. We could just get a missile turret here. Yeah, we can get a missile turret, and, um, and then we can get a missile turret here too. Great, so now we're gonna have some pretty good armies. Let's get some combat probes. Those things are pretty awesome. Uh, 
Ignores enemy armor. Okay, cannot be seen. Upon death, gain intel. Yeah. That's like the high damage one. Attacks in melee, ignores half of enemy armor, and um, let's go ahead and do upon death. Yeah, we'll wait and see how we want to play this. That damn siege needs to be dealt with, though. It's going to be like the movies, but hopefully we won't have to run. We're at 400, so we need to just grab this territory here. We can't, we can't be playing around anymore. Yeah, we're getting a lot of stealth detection and missile turrets and things like that. Influence, whatever. It kind of sucks for us anyway, so we're just going to get the anti-assassination tech. He bravely ran away. He did. That's what he usually does. Um, let's chome it. So we're up to 19% chome, which is great. Uh, Karino's going to start squealing soon, for sure. Man, the red fluid, you, you lose HP so quick. Oh my god, your armies just die so fast, but they deal so much damage. It's, it's very flavorful. I can't believe they're able to take that, by the way. It's pretty impressive. All right, let's get a turret here. And we have stealth and turret. And then we need to do the same thing here. Um, yeah, manpower is looking okay. We're healing our whole army right now, though. So yeah, should be should be back up soon. The combat probes. It's really cool how the combat probes actually it changes the way they look um, when you get that. So fuel cells, yeah, we'll take that too. That's going to be nice for doing a couple other things. And we can actually use that to get the armory upgrades. Yeah, we're we're currently being spice controlled, so we can just like bank spice for now and then sell it later. Um, I don't like that he's like chilling. Oh, he's going for a hedge victory, really. Um, okay, so we can just take this region from him, actually. Okay. I gotta slow down Atreides' hedge. Okay, so we're gonna go for the Atreides here, actually. So we have stealth detection and missile turret. Um, do we have a missile turret here? Our water's at 24, so we could probably switch that. And we can do this. Set up a turret there, that's gonna be very nice. And then we can get stealth detection here soon. Uh, do we not have enough for that? Do we not have enough? There it is, okay. I want my spice back. Do it. Do it. He's going to go get his spice back. Uh, and we have toxic vapors. He's got a missile turret here. I'm pretty safe against assassination. This would be the only spot I would need to cell search. God, that damn siege, dude. I, uh, once I get savage cleansing, I'm going to go down and punish them pretty hard. All right, so Atreides, we need to end our peace with them. That'll cut their lands right off. Um, and for you, let's get some more gunners, uh, some more troopers. And I, now I can get the um, I can get the goods now. I can get, assa not assassins, but... Um, hmm. Would I need to worry about anything up here? We have that. Stealth detection. Yeah, so this whole frontier is going to be safe against it. I, I think we'll have to just accept the vulnerabilities here and here to maintain that. Oh, they're actually going to raid the Atreides, which is good. Okay, Fremen, Fremen are looking a little bit dodgy. So we're going to go ahead and slow this down. But this is like, this is how I win, right? I let them um, kind of duke it out. And nice. Okay, so now we can get the Overlord oh, soon. Can we? We need 10 fuel cells. It's a good thing I built that other building. Okay. So we're taking the Atreides militia down. Do they have an airfield? Are they going to fly over here? I don't think so. I, I want this back region. Um, but they're going to turn on each other now. It's going to get very crunk. I need to start choming pretty hard. Sadly, I'm spice controlled right now, so my income isn't very good. All right, let's take that region. And then we just get back. And we just leave like one or two guys there to hang out. Hold position. And combat robe and you. We did lose one Cerberus. It's okay. Get a couple more of you guys popping out here. And we are going to take this region. All right, Karino's doing it. Are they going to start sieging me? Maybe. Huh, weird. Weird, weird, weird. Okay, I mean, that's fine if you want to If you want to do that. But the Atreides, uh, you don't want me to take this from Atreides? I have to see what he, I have to see what he's scheming here. I might just go in and attack him, honestly. If he wants it, you know, I might have to. Let's get the Overlord coming. The Atreides might already be rebuilding their militia. Doghead is doing what? Um, yeah, they're both very close. Okay, so I think we might just have to go in and murder Hobo's army. Because I'm pretty sure we can beat him now. Okay, we're just going to like attack it again as soon as he leaves. If he wants to, wants to do that. We're going to grab it. Looks like a ceasefire was used by the Atreides. Very nice. He's at 21. Um, and I need to just start buying Chom. I need to like get my win con developed. Although our income is so so poor right now, sadly. All right, let's grab this region. And um, that gives us another little foothold to expand. It's going to be interesting to see how the map reacts right now. Because Doghead's going to have to go do something else eventually. 
Uh, Spine Mastery will give me more agents, which is quite useful. And then Savage Cleansing and Symbols of Authority will give me quite a bit too. Okay, Lands Rad, Eye of the Council, Loss of Rights. I Wait, I have Eye of the Council? <laughs> Since when did that happen? All right. Um, uh, do we support Loss of Rights? I mean, I guess I'm just going to vote myself on this again and see if I get lucky. I don't know. It's fine. Hey, okay. Looks like I won it again. That's pretty funny. Cool. So we're going to head down this way. I don't know what Doghead was thinking. He was he just like appeared and poked me for a second and then left. Some evil scheming, to say the least. Uh, did we get our spice back? Is our spice income back to normal? Yes, it should be. A lot of our harvesters are... I don't know. I thought I upgraded that guy to full. I guess not. Ah, uh, rebellions in our spice fields at the moment. Okay, that's what it is. So we're going to grab this territory. That allows us to expand out a little bit. Um, us playing the hedge game is going to be hard. It's not impossible. It's certainly not impossible. Let's grab that. Let's grab the authority off the map so other players can have it. Carino's currently sitting at a decent amount. The chum prices have gone down, um, so 22%. We're going to be closing in on 30 here in a minute. And now the spice gathering should be back online. And yeah, we got four on all those. And let's put you in safe mode. That was our intent. And we'll uh, hit we'll hit the Atreides here in a minute. Yeah, we'll hit them soon. All right, so let's get all you guys. And then we need to oppress this village. We can get a military base set up here. Obviously, this is going to be a forward uh, attacking position, so we need to do that. We need to heal first, and um, I could go attack in here. That's really close to a racking, though. I want this spec region, um, for sure. Kareno is, is kind of submarining, and now that I have the Overlord... Oh, yeah, the Overlord's here, baby. So I got my big flagship. Yeah, I got my big flagship here. So we're pretty pimping. All right, let's move in there. Attack this. I suspect he's he's ready. He could Lady Jessica me, though, which would be pretty troll. Not much we could do about that. Let's buy some more chum. Robin and company are going to get on it. And let's go ahead and get a knowledge building, because that region has a research post. Atreides Militia are just such linebackers, dude. They're so good. We're pulling back the injured ones. Trying to not die to the red fluid. Unless we're fighting like an actual army. Okay, Robin is doing good. Raven. How the hell do you guys say his name? You gotta figure that out one of these days. Alright, so we're taking the base. We're gonna go heal up with most of our army here and just leave like one big dude here to grab that. Fremen are gonna jump ahead on Hedge and that's gonna give us a spec region, which could be very, very nice. Uh, I don't see them. Yeah, I don't see them at the moment, buddy. I don't. Get a listening post here so we can get a little something something and um cool so we're just gonna hang tight if doghead comes at us again we probably fight you know we probably go in and royal rumble it if that's what he wants they're at 20 and 20 this is gonna make the fremen the biggest target and Carino is probably gonna switch on to the fremen this is like how hearts win though you you kind of submarine you know like you're just kind of you're you're a big fat submarine just going under the radar uh, I have the overlord now so the overlord could definitely punish uh we need to stop trading influence now we don't need it anymore and uh, we got three water back here. Let's grab that. Let's grab the H2O. So we're getting this region. Carino's now jumping up. This is getting very, very close. The Atreides is sitting back here, chilling out. Our militia, we're actually able to defeat the Fremen and the Siege for once, which is good. But we are going to flip this, and I will fight for this, because this is pretty important. Um, I could even call in mercenaries if need be. Uh, let's get this, and we can probably delete that for now, and we can get an airfield here. We want to get an airfield so I can drop reinforcements in here. Oh, did he just Lady Jessica me? I think he did. Yeah, clever girl. Uh, it's not worth getting the traitor, in my opinion. Yeah, so we're going to just hang tight. Uh, where else do we want to go? We could attack Carino now. Carino's number one, so yeah, I'm going to go at Carino. Uh, Carino going after core. Going after core. All right. Let's keep buying Chum. We're at 25%. So our win con is creeping. The Chungus is slowly accumulating wealth. And we're going to try and fight here. I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, I have all my missions, though, which is great. And I don't think anybody's going to try and assassinate me. Okay, he's going to come fight me. I'm going to lose this, but uh, Harkonnen armies are more about attrition anyways. So you don't, like, necessarily... I mean, you can steamroll people's armies, but attrition is a big variable in that, too. All right, so we can reinforce with Mercs. We're going to kill all his militia, which is taking a surprising amount of time. Are they not taking any damage? What the hell? Oh, we were attacking the missile turret. Okay. So he's coming pretty quickly. Let's get back. We Oh, that's why we weren't killing the militia. We, we unfortunately were uh, 
So the Overlord, we can cheese some units out. Check this out. So we can find, like, a Sardaukar. Yeah, we can find a Sardaukar. Must be in combat. Yeah. We're going to go and, like, get this guy. Yeah. Oh, that Oh, that went after the Militia. That's unfortunate. Okay. Carino needs to be dealt with, but so do the Fremen. But I can't really reach the Fremen, so, you know, it is what it is. I might as well work with them to take down whoever's the furthest ahead. Man, I really needed that base. The fact that I didn't get that base is very troll. Um, Jessica and me. Yeah, he's currently sitting at how much hedge? He's at 20k too, so everyone's got a little bit of passive except me. Savage cleansing will be done soon. And um, we can go and do it. Yeah. Let's go up here. And the missile turret. We can try and take that out. We can just kind of keep cheesing it. Oh, shit. Oh, there's a big fight going on over there. You guys see that? Wow. A uh, little bit of lag. Ugh, I hate when that happens. Yeah, sometimes there's like lag for a couple seconds. Okay, so he paused the game because there was lag. Oh, it's Doghead who's lagging. We all were. Yeah. Yeah, that was like a server thing. And let's go ahead and do Toxic Vapors up there. So we're going to take this village. Yeah, someone's, someone's having internet problems and it's affecting us all. Alright, so let's get on the militia here. Kill those bad boys. And um, now he's being attacked on two fronts. So, yeah, we're going to see if we can make a little bit of progress here. Uh, we have airfield support. So I'm just going to call in mercenaries to support us if we need to. Okay. Karino's still fighting pretty hard. Let's go ahead and take this. And then we can run up and push this. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, I guess we're staying here. Let's get the Overlord online. And um, what do I want to get? A Worm Call? Yeah, Worm Call could be cool. We'll send the Overlord over there. Watch this. It's going to like one-shot it. Yes, yes, you better run. Their belly is full of stings. And let's get the, uh, the Spice Silo. He's coming for it. He's coming, like, into worm territory, which is a little bit dodgy for sure. We killed one of the siege drones, which is really nice. I love that. It's so nice. All right, so now we can go out and fight if he wants to. I don't think he's going to want to fight, though. Maybe he will. Let's leave you back here to hold this. And the troopers can go and do it. We'll use the combat drugs, and we're also going to use Robin's buffs. Okay, sleeper agents. Yeah, we're going to get wormed here, probably. Okay, let's get back and let's get Robin back. We can let our, our melee chase him because we're both we're it's going to be mutually assured uh, shy looting. So we're going to chase these guys down and kill as much as we can. And you guys keep destroying buildings here just to be safe. Yep, we're still getting a good hunt on. Let's get you guys on the injured ones. Okay, and let's get some executioners, troopers, and these guys. And um, we can also hire some mercenaries if need be. Alright, so the Overlord can also pop another one of these. So it's a... Uh, is that his Kronos? It is his Kronos. Okay. Okay, so we're destroying buildings, slowly but surely. Our manpower is pretty good. Um, let's get some mercenaries as well. Pull back. Get you on lands rad. Am I losing any territories? This is something that always happens to me when I get really caught up in like late game conflicts and stuff. The Fremen are doing it. We're going to use Toxic Vapors here for a little mutually assured destruction. And we are going to get this Spice Field taken over, which is great. Uh, Chome, let's buy a little bit. We're at 28%. If we can get to 30, that's really, really good. Oh, is this a, that stupid bug where you take damage? Yeah, I think it is. That's so annoying. Well, Robin is there. So, yeah, the brave Sir Robin. Um, all right, so we're going to vote Carino. Going to vote Core here. Okay. So, oh, that's going to be all faction stuff. Or never mind, so that it doesn't matter anyways. Uh, am I going to win another office position just because nobody cares? I'm going to try and get the assassins, actually. Yeah, he did. He, he changed the scope. Robin's going to hang into this one, though. All right, let's shoot this. Fremen are still battling over there. We need to get more missions going, so let's get that. Uh, combat drugs, this, and it uh, should be fine. We're pretty close to taking over that spice field. Unfortunately, yeah, we're going to have to like rally close. Oh, we got the assassins. That's good. So if he tries to come back, you know. All right, so we got mercs coming up. We have a mothership fight. Robin is going to be capturing that territory. He's coming for it, but we're going to worm call him here. If he wants to charge it and get eaten, that's fine. Okay, yeah, he's he's going to get wormed here if he's not careful. So we'll get you, and we will get the territory. Nice, nice. That's really good. It's very, very good, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's get a turret up there. Send the assassins in. We'll hang tight. 
So that's a that's a really nice polarity shift. So now I can I can stop with Doghead for now, because he's going to be sent back a little bit. Yeah, he's at 22. All right. So we have another spice field, um, and we can buy a little bit of chome. Bro, I have 600 gold. <laughs> that's my that's my counter politicking here. Uh, do we need the military base? We do not, because we have one uh, in this territory here. Okay. So I got gear regged, or everybody got gear regged, that's right. And the, the overlord's gonna come back this way. It's nice to have the assassins, because we can um, we can kill that. Uh, I, ain't, I ain't gonna win on that, I would wager. I wish, but I don't know if we will. All right. So we could do this. Yeah, he's coming. Fremen, uh, Fremen and Carino are just racing it out. Okay, so let's go here. Let's get an airfield and build that out. And then this, it's gonna be a missile turret. And then we need to get an office of the order. And then maybe just take this region from the Atreides if we can. Yeah, I don't know. The Fremen and Carino, like their passive hedge is nuts. Like he's probably, oh, he's on White Rift, isn't he? You have White Rift and Double Hedge. Spare me. <laughs> there we go. We've counter politicked him, baby. Let's go. Let's get some combat probes. And, um, yes, let's get another airfield here so we can fly up there. That's going to be good. The water is a little bit low, unfortunately. Yeah, it sure is. I think it's because of rebellions at the moment, though. Yeah, it is. Should be squashed momentarily. Uh, can we, I can't even if I afford to buy more chum. Yes. Listening. Okay, looking good. So 24k on the Fremen. Baron. I agree. They are main threat now. You. Uh, let me message the Atreides. You need to hit Frem. They are close to winning. I won't attack you. The Baron is the Baron is scheming his politics here. He's trying. Okay. So where else do we need to go? That's gonna be good. We got the spice fields, but we're still like just hurting right now. We're just hurting. Why the hell are my agents being captured? Oh, it's because I'm doing missions in their territory. That's what it is. Um alright. We have enough to buy some chum, we do. So now we're at 30% chum, which gives us military power, which is very good. Um is the Atreides gonna be attacking him? I don't know. The Fremen are getting pretty close to winning though. He's looking pretty Chad. Okay. Yeah, like Carino's passive hedge is nuts though. This is a really precarious situation to be in. Davok, how'd you go? Since when? I, I know how to politic. I know how to politic. I don't do it super often, but I do know how. Uh-huh. And yeah, let's get some of these guys. Cool. I love playing Harkonnens though. They're so fun. They're such a cool faction. And uh, okay, so we got the airfield. We got all this. We can get the, um, uh, what, what does this region need to give us a little bit of H2O? Yeah. That will trigger the village buff too. Uh, I need to also annihilate that siege back there to get a little bit of dough. Man, I have no territories to capture. I could just go jack the middle. That would be actually really funny. I think I'm going to go do that just to get in the hedge game. Just so I can be above 20k. You know, Although Chome is probably just my main win con. I'm currently making a lot. I'm making 1700. So we're just going to hard sell right now. And uh, oh, look, look at this. I think, I think he's a little vindictive here. He's a little unhappy about... <laughs> Unhappy about losing a spice field. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, so let's come down here and do this. Because he needs to deal with Fremen or else he's going to lose, right? So I have to I have to hedge my bets on it. And um, we could annihilate that. I think I'm going to go grab the middle. I'm at peace here with him. They're probably going to think I'm just taking the... Um... Oh, this is going to be funny. They're probably going to think that I'm just attacking the Fremen, but in reality, I'm going to be grabbing the middle. So let's get Office of the Order here. And we can grab another building. Harvester is back online. Let's go ahead and recrew that. And cool. Yeah, if he wants to spend all that time on that, it's fine. I don't know what he's going to do, though. He's going to have to attack. Yeah, he did kill one of my harvesters, which is very annoying. He's probably going to keep doing that, to be fair. It's in a very, very dicey position. So we're going to go grab the middle and then just build, like, a missile turret and some stalwart defenses there. Oh, my God. So this spice field's just not going to happen, right? Um, uh, we got the Administrative Burden and Sleeper Agent. Sleeper Agent's a really good one. Oh, shit. I don't have supplies here, do I? Why is everyone so beat up? Okay, let's get the Assassins back there. Retreat. Run, Assassins. We need you to kill Sardaukar. 
and other good units. Okay, so we're making a push for the middle. We have 1.5k right now, but it's still not enough to buy. Let's grab the middle. That gives us a launching point against the Fremen too. You know, it's it's something. No assassinations, to my knowledge. Um, my militias are holding pretty well. Allied units losing supply. Let's get you in there. Is he going to come and fight me? Maybe. He's really aggro. He's very aggro here today, isn't he? All right. Let's go there. Uh, let's deselect the Overlord. Yeah, you see, he runs as soon as he sees the Overlord. Not sure where he's going to go. Yeah, he's going to flee. Okay, great. So let's get the militia in here, and then we can get the turrets. All right, looking good. We got that. So we're on the board now. Doghead wants peace, which I'm fine with for now. Because the Fremen need to be dealt with at this point, you know. It has to happen. Oh, but he's got that sweet money packed with me, which is giving me just a nice bit of dough. Okay, so he's seen the he's seen the, the, the wisdom of the Baron, finally. Okay, let's deploy you. And um, it's Fremen in time, yeah. We gotta, we gotta slow down the Fremen. And then I have to switch back to Doghead. It's like very much a game of uh, cat and mouse here. Uh, we're gonna get symbols of authority, but like us winning on Hedge seems not very likely. We're currently in last, so Chome is probably gonna be the way. We're at 33% Chome. I mean, that's respectable. Um, let's do a little Toxic Vapors up here and then Scavenger Teams. So we're gonna go and help Carino. Yeah, because, you know, Doghead saw the light. He made peace with me, so that was good. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and do combat drugs and sleep reagents. And, oh, God, this is like a movie fight. Oh, the worms. So we're going to massacre this army. We should be able to massacre them. We'll see. Right, Robin is giving the combat drugs. What's cool is my armies are pretty expendable, so I don't really care if I lose them. It's like, you know, whatever. Yeah, we kill a lot. We're getting a lot of money from scavenger teams here, which is great. Uh, all right, so let's do this and this. Somebody's gonna have to go after him after this, though, because I won't be able to clean him up. You can see my troopers fight beyond death. I lost this. I could, I'm trying. The Baron is trying his best. He's doing pretty good, but we're we're currently at 35% chome. Um, all right, so the elected faction loses this. So, ooh, he switched it to the elected faction, which is gonna be. Huh. That would, you would want that on the Fremen, because then they can't expand, you know. So, yeah, we're going to try and get that on the Fremen. Yeah. All right, so they got voted. The Brave Sir Robin, I want to keep him alive if possible. Um, we just we just took down Shawnee. Maudib's going to be a little upset, but it looks like Robin got eaten by a worm, so it's uh, it's all in the family. So we're going to make a goal of him, because he's actually very good. Okay, and let's go ahead and make some troopers and some executioners. Works. And yeah, we're doing pretty good. The the worm here is doing it. Carino can come in and do something now, but they're not they're not being super helpful. They're letting a lot of my army fight, which unfortunately I can't really control that. It's fine. We're gonna go back to our little our little middle hobble and then they can party from there. But Fremen are like on the precipice of winning. They need to be controlled, so. Alright, let's get the water here. We have a couple agents. Let's get you on Space and Guild, and um, we can get you here too. That is a brainwashed agent, which I could sacrifice for something, so we'll keep that. Yeah, there for now. All right, no problem. We'll have our army back soon. We're super rich, so it's not very hard to replenish. Um, I probably need to save more money. We do have our lands chad guards here. And um, water. Let's get... Now we're about to get the middle, so we don't need to worry about water, really, actually. What does this region even have per, per uh, economy building? All right, let's get that. That's my army, so now it's up to him, dude. You got to... If Doghead wants to win, he's got he's to gotta go in and do something. He can't just, uh, can't just chill. I did my part. <laughs> yeah, I sure did my part. <clears throat> I can muster armies extremely quickly too with the um, with the what's it called? Let's get some Cerberus. Yeah, you can see we're even running into manpower problems now, which is pretty insane, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Go for it. I just lost my army. <laughs> All right, so I'm talking to him. We have more tech here. Symbols of Authority is ready. Um, and uh, Siege Incentives is cool. It could be useful at some point. Cruel Reputation, Energy Efficiency, Lay of the Land. I mean, Knowledge at this point isn't going to be very useful, so probably doing this. And how are we looking? Yeah, I think our bases are mostly intact. Fremen are very close to winning, though. Um, yeah, very, very close. 
but they're not going to be able to expand their passive hedge i need to get some passive hedge too now all right so we're going to have good water so let's cut this and get the craft workshops yeah we need to get it going for ourselves too although i don't have like, that many spec regions i think it's literally like two or something in the middle of course all right so we get that and let's go ahead and get this gordon says my feelings are hurt and uh, I might just have to like pay for armies. Okay, I'm at 34% Chom. Unfortunately, like Chom is one of the easier win cons to block because you could just buy. Ay, yeah, yeah. All right, troopers. We need to get some more of these. Some more gunners. Let's get some probes. And I can get some mercs if need be too. Are we going to win this fight up here? Yeah, looks like they're going to win. Okay. So we probably need to switch all of these for like pla uh, for recruitment buildings, right? I don't think assassination is going to be on the table, so we're going to get the double manpower buildings here. It's never too late. And we're going to cut this. We don't need plasteel anymore, so we're going to just switch into manpower like super hardcore. Hopefully it's not uh, too haggard of a transition. And we could do this, cut that, and we're going to get manpower here too. All right, that's a good start. Um, rebuilding another army here, and we're going to go out soon. How are we looking in the middle? Yeah, we got the passive hedge on just those two, I believe. I have a little bit of authority. I could go pillage that siege, which I think I'm going to do here in a second. Um, yeah, these guys are just racing it out, man. And I like my chum is climbing, but not quick enough. I'm at 35%. So we need to, we need to do something. You going anywhere? I can join you. Yeah, we're going to see, we're going to see. By the way, if I lose this game, which it's looking like the, the chonk might struggle to get there. Um, afterwards, I'm going to have to set up some, um, I'm going to have to set up the technology, so there'll be like a, a short break, basically, where I'm going to be setting up all the goodies. Okay. Do it. I will take core. Okay, so let's go clear this out. Um, we need to get that special region here. Is he going at him? Um, I don't see him attacking the Fremen or anything. We need there to be more chaos for me to win this. Like, more chaos. There needs to be, like, people losing shit and just falling all over the place, right? Um, Robin is almost back, which is great. And um, in the middle, what do we got? Airfield, yes. Let's get an airfield here. Carino's... Oh, no. We need to get core. We need to hit core. His passive is worse. Ready? It thought I was trying to say something offensive there. That's actually quite hilarious. <laughs> here. I'm here for you, Baron. We're going to have to buy mercs, which really sucks. Which really, really sucks. But we need it. We need a big army, so... All right, so supply drops, and um, we can sacrifice an agent for um, the EMP bomb. Is actually going to be good against his drones, so we'll do that. All right, so clear these bad boys out, and um, yeah, we can't really expand too much further. At least we have a little bit of passive hedge now. I don't know what the Atreides are doing, dude. Yeah, he's just like he's like semi AFK here, because Karino's going to win if if we just let them do this. They're just going to chill out and win. Uh, I need to break this with them, but I guess we don't need to do it until we're really ready to attack. Chom, let's just buy what we can. We're at 35%. Aye, aye, aye. And, uh, alright. Let's go back to this. Start gathering. That's right. I need to pay my taxes. Just, no, just notice that. I was getting a little bit greedy. You know how I am. It's my favorite play of the game. Oh, boy. We're gonna get, like, one last desperate hoorah, but we need to hit... Guys. Uh, guys, we need to do something. Yeah. The lobby's kind of being a little bit relaxed right now, which I don't like. Let's rally up here. I'm going to go up this way. This is an easier angle to attack. It's it's much easier, although I don't have a military base here. Uh, let's go ahead and get this, and then we can get a military base. All right, military base, military base, military base. There it is. Uh, hopefully, it'll finish in time, and then we get another manpower building here, and boom. All right, let's fly over. Do this. Karino's passive hedge is nuts. Yeah, it's probably GG. Nobody's acting, dude. Like, what the hell is this? What is the Atreides guy even doing? He's just sitting there. All right. We're going to buy mercs, and we're just going to go and attack right now. We're just going for it. we got to break this. And, uh, because he might just jump up and win right here. Yep, he's going to win. Man, well played to Doghead, dude. People were too inactive. Yeah, they, they needed to get a little bit crunk earlier, right? Like, the Fremen need to be raiding him right now. Get in there. Uh, you attacking? Or are we just letting him win? Come on, boys. Let's get it. I have a chance of decapping this, maybe, if like somebody else goes. But I think he might just win on passive, too. I'm moving to, yeah. Gotta be quicker. Big red button? I know. The nukes feel tempting, yeah. So we didn't have a contested enough game for me to win on Chome, unfortunately. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and 
do this. We have the EMP bomb. I could just go like charge his armies here, but we're going to need to get this base. So we initiate the militia. Um, we're going to do scavenger teams. And do we have sleeper agent? Uh, we will in a second. So let's go ahead and do sleeper agent. Okay, so that's going down. We're probably going to lose this fight. Our army's okay. You know? Uh, and then we EMP bomb them here. So we EMP bomb the drones in the back. That's going to mitigate their power. And we'll combat drugs and sleeper agent. And then Robin's going to go ahead and use his goodies. So there needs to be a decap somewhere, like, very soon. Very soon. All right, let's get some mercs coming. And then we can get this and this and just whatever we can send up there, really. I'm actually doing pretty good against his army. The EMP has uh, nullified the power of his uh, backline a little bit. But overall, I think he's probably... He has the home field advantage here a little bit too hard, right? Robin's going to pull back. Uh, and yeah, we're getting a little bit of damage in there. Enough to allow another player to have some success, I would say. So Robin's going to flee the scene. And maybe we can finish off this last guy here. Maybe. Oh, they can't be controlled because of Robin. Uh, how is there no one liberating anything right now? <laughs> Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> what is the Atreides guy doing? Governorship. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, not the chome. <laughs> not the chome block. Okay. Oh, I'm going to get chome blocked. Oh. Bro. <laughs> Bro, we've had, we've had to do... We've had to do that for the past 10 minutes. They've all just been sitting on Karino. <laughs> oh, no. I think he wins, though. I think Karino gets this. And very well played. Doghead's an extremely good player. He deserves it. He's playing very well. All right, let's get some troopers. Robin's going to try and get away. I tried to decap. Um, and, uh, yeah, Atreides got governor also. Okay, there is an attack here. Um, let's go back and, and decap that. Oh, I forgot my overlord. That's pretty funny. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Rally up. Uh, did I get Chome blocked? I got Chome blocked. I'm down to 30% Chome. Yeah, I'm just like, Robin, <laughs> Robin's just popping up to keep him honest here. You know, he just like appears and is like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Okay, we need to get it before those militia come back. See, I'm keeping them, keeping them busy here, which is good. Come on, Robin. Raybon, however the hell you say his name. I know it's some weird shit. All right, let's sneak a couple sneakies up there. Militia are going to be back in a second, so hopefully we can get the decap. We need to get homeboy out here. And um, we're about to get a bunch of troopers. I mean, there is a decap in progress. That decap would have to go through. Yeah, the EMP bomb lowers a uh, multitude of stat shit. He got his militia back. Okay. So we're going to work with these haggard raiders to, uh, to try and take this down. And we need to get our overlord to come and also get you. Okay. Let's go, team. Let's go, haggard legion. Come on, boys. Whatever you can get. Oh, it's probably gonna be uh, it's probably gonna be over here. We're gonna EMP bomb him here to try and help. No, Fremen, you can't run. It's just over if you run. All right, I just helped you. I just EMP bombed him. Okay, there you go. Oh boy, this needed to happen like five minutes ago. This needed to happen a while ago. The brave Sir Robin, you guys like? I think that's more fun, anyways. Yeah, I do. His passive is probably going to win it for him. Like, the Atreides aren't doing anything either. Like, where are their armies? The Atreides need to be teaming up with the Fremen to stop him here. Uh, all right, so we're going to try and take this. And we're going to hope for the best. He's probably going to be able to hold, though. Probably going to be able to hold. Karino's passive hedge is still very good. Still very good. Yeah, so my win con basically got flushed into the trash uh, by the fact that they blocked my chum shares. So that's very unfortunate. Do we have any passive hedge up here? We don't. But it's still going to be enough to do something. Um, sleeper agents? Sure, why not? We'll shy Halud up here. Maybe get some of those guys eaten by the worms. Atreides, where are you at? Help him! They can, they can, we can have a chance of stopping him? Oh, it's too late now. GG well played. GG well played, man. Doghead played a really good game. He played very well. As always, the Atreides need to help. Where are they? Where are the Atreides? He's just uh, hoping that we can stop him, I guess, and then he can win on Governor. They're not here. All right, let's get let's get homeboy back. GG, well played. Yeah, we tried, guys. We tried. It was a good game. We needed all three players to react with like ferocity in order for us to have a chance, and that didn't happen. Uh, these ladies shall live in the light. Yeah, they shall. GG, man. Dog, he played a great game.
showing the the strength of Carino, right? Like great military is good defense, uh, solid solid uh, hedge, obviously, because they can still double workshop. So he played like a champ, dude. Very well played. All right, let's see. GG. So we got the winners. It's gonna be Davok. Uh, and then we got this. Okay, so we got our four winners. So this is where it gets real fun. I'm, I'm actually super excited to try this technology. GG, well played. Uh, Doghead played extremely well. He's, he's really good. He's very good. We needed players to team up on him to stop that. That was my only chance. I was like, I, and I needed the chum thing not to go through. Okay, so let me organize the players. Okay, so time for the top four, baby. Let me go ahead and get this. So this is going to be just a moment. Just a moment to get this set up. And, um, okay. Let's do this. Stop. I was pretty rich that game, Baron. I was making 1500, all right? Let's, let's be fair here. Dirty Dan. Doghead. Uh, who else won? So, and then we have Vahutal. Vahutal. And who else was top four here? And then Davok. The great Davok's also very strong. If you guys haven't seen his channel, make sure to check him out. He's great. I watch a lot of his videos. He he does like Dune Let's Plays. Yeah. Alright. So you lads need to go here and click remote screen share. Okay. Into OBS. Make sure sound is there. And then share link with me. Make sure to turn off music, other things. All right. So we're gonna set this up right now, guys. We just need like a minute or two, maybe like five, 10 minutes to set it up. Uh, and as far as the factions go, we're gonna go ahead and do a randomizer. So I need to do a list randomizer. And we're gonna randomize the players in the top four. And then they're gonna send me their uh, their picks in that order. Vahutol and Davok. Okay, so let's go ahead and randomize. All right. Okay, so this is pick order for finals. Dirty Dan, pick first. It's okay, Dan. Okay. Doghead. So now it's time for Doghead to pick his faction. Let's see what he's got. Yeah, we're having them draft randomly, but it's fine. They have pretty different... I'm pretty sure they all had different picks anyways. So looks like Ekaz was able to win in a lobby, which is pretty fun. So we are going to get those codes soon, and then I'm going to set them up in OBS. Thank you. All right. This is the only tricky part. Once we get through this, we're all good. Send me your code on here with remote share into OBS. Okay, good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. A lot of fun, man. What if two faction winners on a, it's a randomized order. Yeah, it's a randomized order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, need a second to think, yes. There's also a downside to being first pick too, because you pick your faction and other players can kind of counter pick you a little bit too. So it's like, it has pros and cons, which is good. You have pros and cons. I kind of wish I was Vernius that game. I feel like I could have gotten some really good assassinations in. Yeah. Okay, no worries. So there'll be one perspective we don't have, which is going to be uh, Vahutal. He, he says that he shares internet with his phone so it's gonna like crash yeah it's fine so we're gonna just share the other players perspectives okay no problem yeah i love playing Vernius. i love it but baron is definitely stronger like the baron armies are pretty good uh looking forward to seeing your feminine victory along with the fighters so doghead needs to pick and then send me your link send me your link please so i can start setting it up all right, so one second, my friends. We're getting there. And um, now we need to do... OK. 
Okay, so we're gonna go to Day of Ox perspective. Let's get this. This is some fancy sci-fi technology, by the way. It's gonna be great fun. So that should be a browser source. All right. Do that, click okay. That should appear in a second. I got you, Dave Ock, looking good, buddy. Looking good, got your perspective. Just gotta fine tune it. Yeah, I got your perspective, Dave Ock. You're good, man. Thank you so much, brother. I just gotta make sure it like fits properly. All right, so we got Dave Ock's perspective, outstanding. Now we're gonna get dog heads. Um, Again. Okay. okay. So then we need to get his perspective here. I've done it. No problem. Send me link. And the players are doing their picks and bans still. So we need to find out what Davox pick is gonna be. Not Davox, excuse me, um Doghead. So many so many D's in here. Yeah, we got we got the perspectives of the players. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun. I'm I'm very excited for this. This is gonna be great. So we got Dave Ox perspective. All right, so let's go set that up at the top. We're gonna just keep him down here for now. That's fine. Okay, so then we have Dirty Dan's perspective. Hell yeah, let's get the Dirty Dan in here. <laughs> uh, Dirty Dan. Yeah, sorry guys, it just takes a second to set up because I have to get like links from every single player and as we use it more, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, people will be more used to it. That's what she said, absolutely, absolutely what she said. Uh-huh, now, okay. So you did it wrong, open Dune. I think you did it wrong. Need to make sure it's capturing your Dune screen. Try again. Okay, let me double check Dan's here and see. Yeah, so Dan needs to fix it. It's all good. So we'll stand by for Dan. Sad sad Baron is sad. Yeah, we made the finals last time with Vernius, but um, we did not make it this time with the Baron, sadly. And then this is going to be Doghead. Doghead knows how to do this. I've, I've worked with him on this before. Doghead. I really wanted to try this today, too. So I'm happy that this is working out. When you play Dune, will you uh, go by Dune? Yeah. Huh. Says Link is wrong. I think you did something wrong. Davok got it right. Okay, so they're doing their picks and bans right now. So we got Smugglers, and now we need Vahotal to pick. Your faction pick. Okay. So players are still picking right now. Um, so we have Smugglers and we have uh, Fremen so far. Your pick. Oh, he sent me the wrong link. How dare you, Doghead. How dare you. How dare you beat me in a game and then send me the wrong link. All right, I think we got it right this time. Let's see if that one captures. Yeah, that does. Okay, cool. Open Dune for me so I can see currently it's Discord. All right, so that's looking good. And let's see if this works for Dirty Dan. Then we can switch between their perspectives. There's only gonna be one mystery man. Uh, Bowser, okay. Yeah, single player doesn't have as much scheming, obviously. The computers, um, the computers aren't, you know, as good there. So message Davok. You will help you. Okay. Okay, so checking all the perspectives. Looks good, looks good. Looks good. So I got two perspectives captured. We got Harkonnens in the finals. Okay, Harks and then ECAS. Okay. Set up lobby. Uh, Doghead host. All right. So we got the lobby coming up. Grand finals are all set. So hang with us. And um, yeah, we'll be we'll be casting the finals here in a second. I am. Very, very soon. Almost ready. We just need to get the uh, the code from the players, so check this out. We can actually show you a little bit right now. I think Dirty Dan's perspective isn't quite ready. 
Okay, I think he got it. Come on, Dirty Dan. I believe in you. It's a great name. I don't know why it's so funny. Just, this is awesome. Okay, Dan. Okay, looking good. No, he's doing it. He's doing it wrong. You might just have to go with two perspectives if you can't figure it out. Uh, you're still doing it wrong, it seems. So let me double check this and see if I can help him real quick. All right, so, so click share your screen. And then select screen to share. Then select screen to share and click your desktop or Dune. Okay. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Almost there. Yeah, this is honestly, this game is so good. I, I uh, And it's gone through a lot of iterations. This game came out in 2022 at first. I think it was early access. And they've done so many nice bouncing and like flavor passes. Um, it's really gotten to a good place. Yeah, turn tech support. It's basically what's going on. Yeah. They're going to figure it out. Okay, so they've made a lobby, which is great. And it's uh, it's go time, man. Single player is awesome until you're a chome competition. I know, the AI cheats so hard on chome. Okay, let's see if you got it right this time. Come on, Dan. I believe in you. Come on, dirty Dan. Dan. Dan the man. Oh, he's still doing it wrong for some reason. Uh, or for sending video. Well, or for viewing. Hmm. So I think he's doing the wrong one. Let me see. Yeah, he's doing the, the wrong one, so. So are you clicking remote share in OBS? Cause his link has the push thing. Yeah, let me double check that. Okay. Share your screen. Let's go back here. Huh. This last one just screen share. Let's see. And Doghead got it right. You might only have three perspectives. We'll have to see. We might only have three, three, three here, or two even. Okay. Can you help Dirty Dan get this right? Okay. So hopefully Dave Ock will be able to help him. And they'll do it. <laughs> yeah. The House of Dog says he's going to take the throne. Uh, I'm new to Dune Spice Force. Do you need to actually send assassin units to... Yeah, so you have to send the assassin units into your infiltration cells that are in people's uh, village. Um, can you help him? Okay. So Doghead and uh, company are going to do it. Yeah, there they go. Perfect, man. Yeah, so you have to send assassins into the infiltration cells because the assassination slowly loses progress over time. Uh, so by sending the assassins to the cells, you're able to uh, you're able to um, speed that along. Let me show you. Uh, I don't know if it'll have it anywhere. Yeah, skirmish. Uh, yeah, there's not like an encyclopedia here. Yeah, these are all the factions, by the way. If you guys are a little bit newer to the game, certainly quite a bit. If I had to give, we can give like a little a little tier list. Overall, I think that S tier is probably going to be um, Carino, Atreides, and Ekaz. To me, those are the three strongest factions in the game. They, they all have really good militaries, really good political win, pretty good hedge, and decent economies to boot. Um, B tier for me would probably be, or I guess A tier would then maybe be Smugglers for me, and then B tier would probably be the Chonk. I think Harkonnens are like B. Fremen, I don't know where to put them anymore, actually. Fremen are pretty good. Maybe Fremen are also B tier. And then in the pits is probably just Vernius. I think Vernius would be in the pits, but they can still win games. Um, okay. So they're helping Dirty Dan figure it out. And we can look at the perspectives right now. So check this out. We'll, uh, we'll look real quick. So let's go out of studio mode. So if we go down to the perspectives, we're going to be able to look at um, Davox perspectives. So you can see him in the game here. It's not going to be quite as good quality because we're like streaming from their PCs, but you, we're going to be able to see what they're doing. And um, Doghead might be minimized helping him right now, but 
This is the uh, lobby, which is really fun. So we're just going to kind of sit here and chill out and, and have some fun. AoE or Dune favorite? Oh, I couldn't choose. They're both very different. You know, they're both very, very different. But we'll switch back to that soon. So once they once they help Dan out, I want to get at least three perspectives in here and hope, hope for the best. Hopefully it won't lag too much, but we'll find out. Oh, new RTS elements like the ones is yeah this this is uh I think that's the really what's cool about this is like if it was just like a like a if it didn't have the RTS element where you have like armies and fighting I don't think I would enjoy it you know if it was just like a grand strategy like a sip type game it'd be fun but it wouldn't be quite as cool or unique I think that's really what does it Fremen are strong um, they were bugged though I think a lot of people's perception on the Fremen is when they were bugged all right did Dirty Dan get it let's see baby. Oh, Dan is saying he sent the wrong link like 30 times. <laughs> Dan! All right. It's okay, Dan. I still think you're cool, man. Uh, all right. So Dirty Dan should be good now. I think his perspective is going to be captured. Yes. Good. Good. All right. Go ahead and start. Start. We're all set. Doghead. Go time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Let the Nurglings feast. Dzień dobry, Yakshimash. You're a little bit late, but we're in the grand finals right now. So players are going to be starting here in a moment. So let me close down my game because we don't need to have that open. And um, all right, so let's close this. Close that. And we can go ahead and go into the uh, studio mode here. And we can go through the player's perspectives. So here we are. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit pixelated, a little bit lower quality because I'm having to capture uh, the player's perspectives and I'm gonna be fine tuning the sizing a little bit here. There we go. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead and get that going. Yeah, it's hard to get it to fit perfectly. Might be a little bit haggard, but I think that's, that's the sweet spot right there. All right, guys. I don't know what the audio is gonna be like too, but it's the only way we can really cast this. So we're gonna to have to deal with it. We're gonna have to deal with it. So this is the grand finals. Uh, we have Davox perspective. We got Dirty Dan over here on the Fremen, and then we got Doghead on the Smugglers. So we're gonna be able to switch between these. Did I hear Polish? Talk, you did. My wife is Polish, so I know a couple of phrases and words and things like that. I am doing Bardzo Dobsha, and uh, yeah, we're having fun, man. Are you doing perspectives through the StreamYard? No, we're doing. Um, we're doing, what's it called? We're doing a video. Okay, we need to like fix this. It's a little bit off. It's a little bit off. Okay, there we are. Okay, that looks a little better. So it looks like here, spawning on the north side of the map, it would appear to be our good old ECAS player. And this is gonna be Davok. So Davok's gonna be chilling out and uh, scouting around for his first spice field, heading over to the west immediately. And uh, he's opening with a squire and a musketeer. So it is mixed forces. Maybe that's the way to do it. Maybe that is why he's so good at this game because he opens with uh, he opens with the one one combo. All right. Now for old dirty Dan, the dirtiest of Dan's, he is going to be playing the Fremen and we don't know where he's spawning quite yet, but when he zooms out a little bit, we'll be able to check, but this is going to be dirty Dan here and he is going to be taking this village up to the north. And it looks like it's going to be a Plascrete opening. So Plascrete is, is obviously one of the staples aside from, because with Fremen, much like uh, when you're playing the uh, the uh, Vernius, you don't have to grab your initial spice field because Fremen can work neutral spice fields. It's really nice. And there's a tech that they have that reveals all spice fields on the map. So Fremen can kind of like send their spice caravans out on the map. And they also don't need to worry about being eaten by Shai Halud while they're um, harvesting. So that's pretty cool. So Doghead here, uh, the winner of my pod, very good player, very active in our Discord as well. Uh, he is going to be going for a big early army, takes his spice field immediately, and is going to be probably pillaging pretty rapidly. Smugglers are like the dark lords of like early pillaging, like dark lords. So he is going to just be absolutely punishing. And we see, oh, he has a great volcano over there. That's pretty nice. Great volcano is a really good special region. It, um, yeah. So there's not going to be audio, unfortunately, but it's okay. You guys can listen to my uh, to my old voice here, and I could put on like the background music of the Dune game, perhaps. I think that could be fine. Oh, look at that. They're, they're already talking in private chat. We have Doghead chatting it up. But yeah, so if you're playing Smugglers, what you want to do is typically amass a very big early army and you just want to like hammer all the nearby bases down, right? Like all the nearby bases. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, isn't this cool how we can switch perspectives? 
In the future, we'll try and get the audio hammered out, but the problem is it's like the player's audio, so I don't know what their settings are like. And also, if they have like notifications or if they're playing music in the background or like anywhere like that's being picked up, like it could cause problems on YouTube. So um, we'll figure it out in the future. And if you guys want to see like recorded games like this with like, you know, multi-perspective, we can totally do that. So back to old Dirty Dan. Dirty Dan, he does get the, oh, that's a nice village there. He does get the eco boost and immediately get, wow, look how fast he clicks. God, my old arthritic hands. I'm like, I'm like looking at, I'm looking at this and I'm like, Jesus, look how fast he like clicks on those buildings and stuff. Yeah, no wonder. Look at that. Manually scouting all the villages. So he's got Doghead to the north of him, it looks like. So it looks like the Fremen are on the south side of the map. Doghead is on the west. And uh, we do not have the perspective of the Harkonnen player. So the Baron is going to be an evil schemer. And uh, we're just not going to know what he's up to. Apparently, he, he gets his internet through his cell phone. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how that's going to work. Now, early tech here. It looks like it's going to be military for the Fremen. He's going to get recruitment initiative. And he is going to get Arrakis' secrets after that. So Arrakis' secrets is the one that reveals all the spice fields. And recruitment initiative will give him more command points to get a bigger early military, which... I suspect we could see some early fighting. Now, Davok, he is up north. The foliage is there looking very, very nice. He's got a spice field and a second base is going to be a, uh, looks like it is going to be a research station. So that is a region that uh, gives you money for a research station, uh, for getting a research hub. It's very nice. So basically, research hubs, I believe, have 12 or 16 upkeep. I can't remember off the top of my head. And it pretty much nullifies that, which is very, very good. How about the big boy Baron? We can't see him because his internet is too bad to stream to us. Um, you know, cause how this works basically is the players are individually streaming their connections to me. Um, so if they have really bad internet, it could cause like some serious issues. Um, you need to have like at least four or five, um, upload speed to do this from what I was reading. And according to our, uh, Harkonnen player, he does not have that. He has like barely any. So yeah, we're out really good observer mode in Spice Wars. Yeah, we're trying, we're trying. I think we need to put a little bit of like background music on. I don't know what music we could play. But um, regardless, we'll just keep we'll keep going through it. Yeah, Dune is very metal. It is. It is indeed. All right. So first agent's going to be on Arrakis for Davok. Very very standard, right? You go on Arrakis, and that's going to give you uh, it's going to give you authority. You know, he's even showing us. Look at Davok. He's like mousing over things. I wonder if he's doing that on purpose because he knows he's being observed. Who knows? Who knows? Where is he playing from? Arrakis. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's great to have the Baron in the shadows. It leaves us all in mystery. I wonder if we're going to see any early conflict. Fremen opening up with four warriors. Very standard. Fremen usually go early military, in my experience. Oh, look. So Dirty Dan is already, already touching tips with the Baron. And Dirty, wow, Dirty Dan has three spice fields. That's so good. So he's got one west of Siege Tabor. He has one to the direct east and one to the direct north, which I can probably guarantee you that him and the Chonk are going to be fighting over that. Because um, the Chonk, he wants his spice. That's like... The only way Baron typically wins is through either Chome uh, or Hedge. Uh, you rarely see the Baron with other win cons. I mean, Baron is actually pretty good at assassinating. And that's something that I maybe uh, underutilized in the uh, in the previous game, right? Because I could have potentially gotten some good assassinations off. Uh, but, you know, the Baron is good at it because of the interrogation center and the intelligence from pillaging. So the Baron can get really quick assassinations from just spam pillaging and getting intel and interrogation center. That's pretty good. Dude, Dirty Dan with like 500 APM. Yeah, I know. You guys want the Doom soundtrack? That would be pretty funny. Yeah, the problem is, I don't know. Yeah, you got to be careful on YouTube with what music you play. So look, Fremen are kind of looking a little crunk. Yeah, we could see Vahutal in a bit of trouble. Wow, Fremen going for early action already. So they're going to be heading over to the Chonks lands and we immediately see uh, him raiding the Baron. Oh my God. I think this is going to be an early blood feud. He's stealing a spec region from the Baron. Now, if the Baron actually loses this, that is going to be so god-awful for the Baron because spec regions cost more to take, right? So Dirty Dan getting super dirty and, uh, wow, military base this early on the border of the Baron. Dude, I am I am so, so happy that Dirty Dan is not uh, my neighbor in previous games. He is aggressive, but I love to see this. I think this is where Fremen really shine. And if he's able to get Stalwart Alliance... It's a tech that the Fremen have that allows you to spawn um, an allied army out of nearby sieges. Dude, it is nasty, nasty. Um, his agents, wow. So Dirty Dan did not go with uh, Stilgar. He went with Mother Amalo and Othime. So Othime is really good because he gives, or Jamis, excuse me. Um, Jamis is extremely powerful because he gives you access to um, more military power outside your territory right away. 
And we do see the upgrades coming in for the Fremen. What's he going to take? It looks like he's just going to take the uh, damage in neutral territory or an enemy. Okay. He's deciding. We'll get back to that later. But um, yeah, Dirty Den, he's, he's getting in there, dude. He's pushing for it. So he immediately gets the armory upgrades. And which one's he going to get? Okay, he took the health for water. So his warriors, Fremen warriors early game can be unholy linebackers. They can just be so tanky if you get that upgrade. You basically spend one water per warrior to give them 100 plus HP, which puts them up to almost another tier of a unit. Yeah, so the Baron could be in really big trouble, guys. He's losing an early territory, and he's trying to muster a resistance, but the Fremen army, I think, will kick the beat the brakes off him, I think. It depends on how they fight. Oh, the Baron actually does have a big force. Um, the Fremen are preparing for combat, and the Fremen do have a military base coming up. We're going to see if that gets up in time, but this is like this is the makings of an early blood feud. There's a spectator mode, there's not. No, I'm using a fancy technology to do it. There's a technology through OBS, and anybody who's interested, it's called Video Ninja. It's an OBS one. Um, okay, early fight going on. The Baron's gonna be taking it to the Fremen. I think the Baron will win this. He's got a lot of demolishers there and has a lot of room to fall back. Really good micro from the Harkonnen player. He's able to lure the Fremen army out, and the rest of the Harkonnens are just blasting the Fremen, and the Fremen are gonna need to retreat now. This is a little bit of a hard territory to take, Oh, wow, setting up a missile turret already. So the Fremen expecting a counterattack. Could the Baron, could the Baron counterattack him? Two warriors going down. That's a lot of manpower to replace. You'll see he was looking. So Dirty Dan's early gambit might have floundered. Um, that was a big investment. You know, he lost several warriors and now the Baron is coming for blood. So you can see here that Vagatal is a very, very good player. I thought the Baron was going to be in trouble. Like if he greeted a little bit too hard or had any bad plays anywhere, he could have been in huge trouble, but... Look, look, he's messaging him. Look, he's asking for peace. He said, uh, thought we were, uh, thought you were greeting, says Dirty Dan. So Dirty Dan messages the Baron and thought he was being greedy, but the Baron, he was not being greedy. And the Baron should for sure pillage his village in response, right? So here we're going to be seeing uh, the Harkonnens counterattacking the Fremen here. Fremen have very good militaries, but when I saw those demolishers coming out, wait, okay. Oh my God, the Baron offered a non-aggression pact? What? Oh my god, the Baron let him off the hook so hard, dude. So hard. So the Baron decided to let him off the hook. He offered a non-aggression pact, and he did not pillage the Fremen territories. Dude, I, I don't know what's going on. We're not losing to, <laughs> losing men to rats. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, wild. All right, so taking a look over at Doghead's perspective and the smugglers... Uh, he is actually pretty close to the Fremen too. It looks like they're going to be touching tips as well if he decides to take this territory. We're going to have to see. Uh, we can also see Davok on the north side of the map on the ECAS. So we do see Doghead moving down here. All right. That that was weird. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, if I were the Baron, I would have pillaged him and then offered. I would have pillaged him, destroyed like two or three buildings and then offered peace. Um, but maybe the Baron is trying to establish goodwill and be like, hey, Fremen, you know, I know you made a mistake. I'm going to I'm gonna let this one slide, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I will describe the message as being read. Sorry, the quality, there's not much I can do because it's from the, uh, I'm, I'm the players are streaming their perspectives to me with this sci-fi technology. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to fix the screen a little bit. That's a little bit of a tricksy one and we need to scoot this up a little bit. There we go. I'll read the messages to you though as they do come out. So over here, we have the old smugglers. Yeah, Doghead is, he's a really good schemer. Um, smugglers can win in a multitude of ways. Um, smugglers can win uh, through Chome. They have they have probably the second best economy in the game. Although Carino and smugglers are probably like in the realm of second best economies. Harkonnens have the best economy for sure. They, they can make the most money, like hands down. But um, smugglers can win through that. They also get pretty decent passive hedge through some of their underworld mechanics. Um, they can win through, they can assassinate pretty well. Like smugglers are kind of, I suppose, the jack of all trades, right? Now, looking up at old Davok here, Davok is uh, Netflix and chilling on the north. And if you guys are a little bit newer, um, what Davok is doing is he's trying to set up a sanctuary. So he is trying to surround neutral territories with either deep desert or, um, although is that going to be, is he, where is his first sanctuary? He hasn't set one up yet. We do see one spice field over there to the west, one to the east, and a third one to the northwest. So is he going to take this? No, he's just pillaging it. He's probably going to make that into his um, sanctuary. So he'll take the territory to the uh, east of that, and then he's going to make that into a sanctuary, I would guess. Yeah, Fremen just wanted uh, berry bushes. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is these are really really strong players we have in here. In the last grand finals we had, we had it was it was myself, it was um, 
was Doghead in the grand finals? I don't know if he was. I know Spielberg was there. Spielberg ended up winning the event. I'm trying to remember who else was in there. I think Vahutal was in there. The the Harkonnen player made it to the grand finals last time too. We'll have to see. But yeah, he's Ekaz is going to be able to make some sanctuaries up north. And the one thing that Ekaz has going for them that's very, very good, uh, he is going to be putting his agent on Spacing Guild, so that's going to give him manpower there. So he's got two on Arrakis, one on Spacing Guild. Is the Ekaz have the entire north to themselves. The south side of the map, if you take a look over at like Dirty Dan, it's very congested, right? We have the Fremen touching tips with the Harkonnen. So Baron Vladimir is touching tips with uh, with the, the Fremen. And uh, and the smugglers are right there too. So they're all very, very close. Whereas Ekaz kind of has... The, yeah, the terrain isn't the best, but he has the entire north kind of safe. So if Ekaz wants to just like kind of be greed... Oh, he's thinking about... Oh, he almost... I thought he was attacking the Harkonnens there, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, he can just greet it up like super, super well, right? He's gonna be he's gonna be absolutely chilling. Yeah, yeah, we're piecing it together with OBS Video Ninja, correct? It'd be nice if they we could get the audio audio from the players, but unfortunately, we're not getting it. Yeah, it's it's something I'll work on for the future ones, but that would be kind of cool. Obviously, can't interrupt them during the course of the game. Back to the game, indeed. Back to the game, indeed. Fremen are gonna be taking a spice field here or pillaging it. Probably is gonna be the more common situation. Uh, yeah, Fremen on three spice already, which is pretty good. Davok is on two spice, uh, soon to be three once he expands over that way. And looking over at Doghead, Doghead only has one spice harvester, uh, but does, oh, actually we see the worm nest in the bottom. So if you look in the bottom uh, south, uh, down south of that base at Altar here, there's another spice field down. And what's cool about smugglers is they don't take any, um, they don't take any, they take less, I, I don't know if it's any, I think they take substantially less penalties for long distance annexation. So like the further you typically annex from your base, the more authority you need to use. But with these smugglers, it's not so much the case. Sing a song for us, it's all the audio we need. I got you, man, I got you, we're good. Why don't players ever take free troops from the points of interest? They do sometimes, oftentimes the other options are better. The free troops are good if you're going early aggression. Yeah, that's typically when you want to do that. But um, nobody's really aggressing too early here. We haven't seen any heavy-duty conflicts. The hegemony is starting to rise. <laughs> rise, minions, rise. Yeah, no crew, though. All the manpower went into fighting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The Baron probably is okay on manpower. I would imagine he went with the manpower counselors. They're very good. Uh, I, you know what's something I want to practice? I want to practice some, like, hope murder hobo Baron. I want to see how good he can be. So we got Trial of the Great Houses, troop recruitment, and um, smugglers aren't going to put a bounty on anything. As far as votes go, um, smugglers have a decent amount of votes, um, but who has the most? Yeah, smugglers actually kind of do. Is he going to actually do anything? I think he's just going to save his votes. So he is going to be saving his votes. Dirty Dan doesn't care at all. He's just the Fremen. And Davok is uh, looking like he wants to win the Imperial Missionaries. So Davok is going to try and get that. Yeah, he's putting all of his votes into that, which will give him about, uh, oh man, Davok's are sitting on 568. And yeah, he's got a decent amount of uh, gold there, but um, this is going to boost him up to a couple thousand. No, Smugglers actually ended up going all in on it. So Smugglers went for the money. So they ended up getting that. Yeah, they did. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, Smuggler's looking pretty comfortable as well. Spice Harvester appears to have been eaten for the old ECAS here. Dirty Dan is still, you know, hanging out in the south. I wonder if he's going to get aggressive on the Baron again. Um, Fremen definitely, early aggression is very, very good. But most people, if they have a Fremen neighbor, immediately start to, like, get suspicious and be really cautious, right? So he's going to take that and thinking about pillaging it. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a pillage. Probably going to go for those rare minerals over there. Um, so he didn't go Stilgar, which is interesting. Stilgar, I always feel like, is the best one because he reveals all the sieges to you in the beginning. And he allows you to get the Stalwart Alliance going very quickly. Mother Amalo is good, though. She gives you intel and um, also does help you with your spice crews and spice income. So Mother Amalo is very good for, like, Chome slash Economic Fremen. Um, yeah, it's not bad. I, I, th I still think Stilgar is the best. Stilgar reveals all the sieges. And then you can rush Stalwart Alliance, which allows you to find the sieges and enemy lands immediately and uh, go pretty ham from there. Most votes, yeah. Yeah, the minor houses, they, they must have come in. Smuggler is going for the worm nest. That could be a conflict. Um, oh, wow, Doghead trying to kill the uh, the Ornithopter there. I don't know if you guys saw that. The Fremen are going to be shy hooting across. So they're heading to the rare minerals, and they're going to be uh, border sharing here with the old smugglers. As a matter of fact, he could actually go attack the smugglers if he wants to right now. That would be a really good ambush. Uh, ambushing Fremen are pretty nuts. They're very, very strong. What's people's standing income? You can see currently the income for the Fremen is going to be 56. 
Uh, for Doghead, it's going to be uh, 80. And for Davok, it's going to be negative 18. Um, so yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. Wow. Okay, Fremen are going to go shut down the smugglers here. This is pretty big. Oh, the worm nest is there, though. You got to watch out. Better get those warriors out of the, the dust or they're going to get eaten. Um, a good micro here from Dirty Dan. Yeah, he needs to get on there. And he denies the smugglers the cap. And he kills several smuggler units. So that early skirmish was actually very, very good. That was an MLG play by the Fremen. Um, but that's going to certainly not make him any friends. His army's a little bit beat up here, and uh, the worms are still hunting him. He could get shy looted. Okay, he's messaging someone. He says, uh, he says, smugs, uh, okay. He's saying that the smugglers are being greedy, basically. Oh, he got shy looted. He got wormed, baby. It's worming time. You know, it looks like he cancels an infiltrator, gets some more skirmishers. And uh, he better be careful. He's going to get shy looted again here, and that would really be unfortunate. Yeah. He's, he's, basically, he's basically calling out the smugglers here, as far as I can tell. It's a little bit hard to say. A little bit hard to see. Uh, Fremen can scale okay into late game. They're they're pretty good at playing hedge victories. Their expansion play is very strong. It's very, very strong. I would have loved to have seen Avernius, by the way. Oh, and you guys want to know... Oh my god, he's going in on the smugglers right now. Wow. So he is currently popping off here on the smugglers. He's going to be revealing a siege right there. And he is raiding the smuggler land. So this Fremen player, very aggressive. Yeah, going into lands, Rad. Interesting choice. I thought he would go in. He's hard selling spice right now. Oh no, hard gathering spice. Interesting. So he's going to gather a little bit, his economy in the negative. And what is he going to do there? That's the question. Okay, so rare minerals are going to be processed here for Dirty Dan. And um, yeah, where is, is he going to actually attack? Yeah, he missed his first taxes, it looks like. That's pretty funny. And now he's going to attack. Oh, I'm surprised he's not pillaging. Pillaging the smugglers there could be good too, but smugglers might have trouble reinforcing that. Okay, Dirty Dan once again getting real, real crunk, dude. He's moving about. He's He's harassing. He's attacking. And uh, yeah, he's he's put, he's pressuring the smugglers, which is smart. You got to keep them honest. And obviously, the Fremen want that spice field there, right? The one to the west, they're going to want that one. So let's go to Doghead's perspective and see what his counterplay is going to be. Um, Doghead has an okay military. He's got five units, including a free company. Um, one of his scavenging drones is up north. He is going to keep pillaging, and uh, he's got a main base building going. We don't know what that is. I assume it's some sort of military. But yeah, losing that territory is kind of unacceptable for him, so I don't think he's going to do it. Yeah, he didn't have enough spice, it looks like. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, another scavenging drone perhaps going to be the play. Um, maybe thinking about mercenaries. He hasn't put a lot of defenses in his lands here, and I think he's just going to have to give that up to the Fremen. He's just going to have to let it happen. I don't think he's going to be able to get in there, man. Yeah. So let's look at his tech here. He's got, oh, wow, he went hard in on valuable trinkets. Wow, he rushed valuable trinkets. Man. So smugglers getting that early hedge going. And oh, no, look at that. Over to the west, we saw the smugglers actually being liberated. Uh, are the Fremen going to try and fight him off here? Dude, smugglers are already going. I know the activate windows. <laughs> yeah. The smugglers are already going for what's it called? Um, they're already going for uh, valuable trinkets and like workshops. That's a really interesting play style. And it's, it's cool. I feel like I'm learning a lot by watching this. Hmm. Rushing 10k hedge is very strong too. Uh, because you're able to get a hero very quickly. So you can like do timing pushes with your heroes and whatnot, right? So Doghead going to be getting the manpower building there in his main base. So he's going to be getting the uh, manpower augment. Uh, Harkonnens are just greeting in the corner. No surprises. No surprises. Davok on the very top. Uh, do we see any sanctuaries yet? We don't see too many sanctuaries yet, actually, as a matter of fact. He's going to get epic quest. And um, yeah, he just got musketeers and squires. And there, okay, he has one sanctuary. So the one we talked about, that's really good. So that territory that he has there is going to be making everyone um, or every nearby region uh, is going to be getting double traits. It's very good. And it looks like it's hitting pretty much his entire empire, which is very, very nice. They'd be smuggling Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Probably so. Hopefully you guys don't mind the janky perspectives. It's, it's We don't really have a choice, unfortunately. Um, and we'll iron it out in the future. I mean, but this is like the best we can do until we get a spectator mode, which will be so nice. It, they eventually added it to Northgard, if I'm not mistaken. So he's getting his third. Oh, no, that's his fourth spice field. Okay, so he's actually going to be kind of rich. He's going to be pretty rich. Dirty Dan, in the meantime, is eyeing this. Yeah, Dirty Dan is really getting aggro here, dude. He, he wants it. He's going back to that village. He is... He is keeping the smugglers honest, that is for sure. Uh, he's thinking about getting another caravan. Um, he's not working the worm's nest right now. Trail migration. He's got parallel training already and desert trekkers, so he's got a lot of the early Fremen military. 
we do see that Doghead has been able to build up some defenders now. Um, Fremen definitely want to rush some special regions. He's sitting on 268 right now in authority. I like how he just doesn't even care about the uh, the Landsrad. Let's go and see what the Landsrad's going to look like. So we have examinations, we have a territory contest, and we have chum subsidies. Um, none of these are really that important. Um, Landsrad examination could be annoying to the Baron because it would um, put them in the negative. He basically ma he made himself immune to a couple of those. But Landsrad examinations, if somebody has like low Landsrad, you can vote them down to the pits. Get people in voice chat, mute turn. Uh, yeah, uh, get people in voice chat, mute turn, and stream. Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying. Let's see, I prefer you jump in Discord streams. Yeah, I don't know if it would be better quality. We'll have to try it next time. Yeah, we'll have to try it. That is something we could like, we could pause and switch to at some point, but I think this is kind of cool how we can switch between it. It's a little bit smoother. So if we could just work out the audio, it should be fine in the future. Okay, so up in the north, Davok is gonna be probably setting up another sanctuary. He's offering a non-aggression pact to the smugglers um, with a research agreement, interesting. He thought about it, but didn't end up offering it. So Spicefield's coming down here and obviously most of the actions here. Uh, we get a perspective on the Baron Baron is on one spice field right now, and uh, oh, and there's two more behind him too. Once again, uh, he's going to be raiding, and he's going to be liberating. So Fremen, if they liberate, it's really good because it actually um, gives you authority too, which is nice. So when Fremen liberate a base, it gives you 50 authority. Very, very strong. Yeah, he looks like he wants to fight the smugglers. He is, uh, he is not letting any of this precious spice uh, you know, be taken by the outsiders. If they meet you, they, can, uh, they can't get meta-knowledge, but you can still have access to all perspectives through the Discord. Yeah, we could try that. Hmm. We could try that. We could try it indeed. So are the smugglers going to come fight? What's cool is we can check. Um, Doghead's military is not good enough to probably win that fight at this point. That's just a pillage anyways. Um, look at that. The Harkonnens are losing the middle. There's like an AI raid that's taking that over, which is pretty funny. You can see the middle is being decapped right there. And uh, another agent's going to be assigned onto the chum. He's on triple Arrakis, man. So Doghead is going for like a hard hedge victory. He's on triple Arrakis, a mass authority already. And, um, you know, he's got like craft workshops pumping. I'm, I'm learning a lot by watching him for sure. Like I never think that the pa early passive hedge could be very strong, right? Because by the time the late game comes around, it builds up to quite a bit. So that place got pillaged by the Fremen. So I don't think Doghead really cares about that. Um, up in the north, ECAs are really on their own, man. Like nobody is messing with them. Yeah, nobody's messing with them. Yeah, looking looking pretty chill. And old Dirty Dan, he's uh, he's back to his base here. He's got triple spice fields, pretty good. And uh, what's he gonna do with his military? So the Harkonnens want, uh, <laughs> the Harkonnens trying to get a, a financial agreement with the Fremen, which is like, of course, the Fremen eco isn't that good and the Harkonnens will benefit. Guys, we already have 10% chome from Doghead too. I don't know how he's doing that, but he's popping off. His eco is actually looking pretty good. Um, I, I think it's from all the pillaging. So Doghead currently only has 800 gold, but he's been pillaging. You notice how he snipes special regions. I'm starting to get the hang of that. Yeah, I'm starting to get the hang of like what he's, his, his gameplay style is. Um, so the Fremen are asking for peace. He says, want peace. So the Fremen are going to chill out with the smugglers. Doghead has, says, sure. And want me to send a uh, truce? Okay, so Doghead's offering to send the truce because he has a lot of uh, knowledge, I would imagine. And yeah, so Doghead, what his play style is, is he gets these early special regions. He just rushes them, okay? And then from there, what he does is he puts the craft workshops on in the very early game to get that free hedge, which can't be taken away, right? Because the other hedge can be taken away, um, territories. Um, but the passive hedge is forever. So he builds up this like early surplus and then that makes it really easy for him to win on territory grabbing later on. It's a really, really cool play style actually. Really, really good. Dog is doing a hedge main with the gov diversion probably. Yeah, we'll have to see. I've seen it a few times. No, smugglers, uh, yeah, it looks like they maybe got warmed a little bit. They might have. Davok is just making gardens and uh, chilling out in the north. He's going to get his second sanctuary. So Davok now has two sanctuaries. And this is actually a really clever play. Um, what you do is you make your sanctuaries into the special regions. So you'll notice both of his sanctuary territories are spec regions. So what's cool about that is um, you're not going to be like super high on uh, the hegemony, but in the late game, you can just capture your sanctuaries, right? And, uh, and then that's going to be a surprise that people aren't expecting. So yes, 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 indeed. So big army for Davok. I don't think anybody could really like fight him super well. Um, it looks like he's scouting out all the passives and seeing what everybody's up to. As far as Chome, it's basically just Doghead. 
We haven't seen the Harkonnens going to bananas uh, yet in that regard. We haven't. We have not indeed. All right, down to the south, we see the Fremen taking the worm nest. So maybe he just wanted peace so we could take that worm's nest and get like a big spice economy. I suspect that's the case, getting manpower, taking advantage of the village trait here. He's got a siege that now he's going to be befriending. And uh, yeah, another spice field there too. Man, Fremen could go up to five spice fields. I'm surprised he took peace though with smugglers to an extent. I feel like he was having some fun. He could definitely, you know, pillage them and keep them honest. But yeah, we're seeing the dreaded Doghead continue to be tyrannical. Now back to Doghead's perspective up in the north. Army is small. Obviously, he got a peace treaty with the Fremen. Uh, I don't know if they actually sent it through. I think they did. Uh, now he's going to get a craft workshop or a turret. Okay, getting a turret. Oh, that is the spacing wreck, ladies and gentlemen. So over to the east, that is the spacing wreck building. So that one is really good because it gives you free ship parts. So you don't need to like trade um, authority or spice for uh, for favor. That's really, really good. That's really, really good. And Ekaz, let's see how many regions he's rocking. He's got four spice harvesters right now. Um, that's pretty good. His economy is plus 185 at the moment, which is pretty good for this point in the game. It's going to take the free passive income, and um, he's just spamming masterpieces in the villages. Ekaz is so strong, man. They, they can just do so much. Airfield coming down here, and he also gets some uh, fuel cells, which are very good for the Ekaz drones. Uh, but, you know, now there's a main base building that gives you fuel cells, so it's not like Ekaz is ever going to be completely without fuel cells. There was a time where it was it was a hard times for Ekaz, man. It was very, very hard times. Harkonnen to the best villages to install. Yeah. So un installing underworld headquarters in Harkonnen villages is uh, is very good because they make so much money and you can you can basically take a percentage of the money, which is um, which is pretty good. So heading on down, it looks like the Ekaz army is going to be cruising, taking another spice field, and that's a god tier spice field because it immediately just becomes a sanctuary because of the deep desert and uh, that territory up north is going to be a sanctuary. So that's very very good. Davok looking to scheme. He is scheming pretty hard. Dirty Dan up on the borders of the. Um, of Doghead here. Is he going to attack him? I don't know. He's certainly looking like he wants to take it. For Fremen, you need to be taking a lot of territories, though, um, because they get a lot of authority. Although, I mean, pillaging is good, too, if you don't have the authority. But yeah, you want to be expanding and not wasting your authority. So water traps going down here. I really like that strategy from da uh, from Doghead, though. The early, like, passive craft workshops and whatnot. I don't know if he has any right now. I don't think he does. He did have some earlier, though. I saw a craft workshop when the Fremen uh, decided to attack him. All right, so he's just going to go steal some of those things, and now he's going to be going for the uh, for this region, which does have fuel cells. But for the Fremen, that basically is like a spice orgy, so they just get um, faction-wide military strength, and there's no downside to it now. All right, so he's going to be saucing up the Fidekin, making them even scarier. Some nice upgrades coming out. Fidekin have a crazy, crazy expensive upkeep. Uh, nobody's at 10k yet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we see 7.7 .7 for Dirty Dan. Davox at 8.8 .8 and Doghead is at 11.4. Wow, Doghead is is popping off in terms of his hedge, and uh, he's going to become an arch uh, uh, a villain very very quickly here in this game. I think very very quickly. Yeah. Who do you guys think is going to win? By the way, let's put it up to a poll real quick. So we're going to put a poll up in chat and see you guys think is going to win. Winner, um, Baron. We got the Baron. We got Fremen, and then we have Ekaz, and then we have Smugglers. Curious to see what you guys think based on the perspective that you're getting here. Hopefully we're aptly explaining things. Yes, yes. So he was looking at Wonders of the Desert. Um, not much in the way of... Yeah, because that's the thing. Like Smugglers can pillage so effectively. And he's going to be getting Command Post. Command Post is like an auto-take. It makes your military units 30% cheaper in terms of their upkeep, which you just have to take. Uh, otherwise, your armies become too expensive late games. Yeah, so we got votes all over the place. Um, by the way, if you haven't checked out Davok, he uh, has a YouTube channel as well where he uploads exclusively Dune. So if you guys aren't getting your fix here, we're not doing enough Dune for you. Make sure to check him out. He puts up a lot of battles and he's a very good player. He's very, very good. I mean, clearly he's here in the finals, right? So he is very, very strong. Yeah, Ekaz, I think, is just straight up chilling, man. They are just hanging on out. Um, let me check something real quick. So we're going to check this. We're going to check that. Control audio via OBS. Um... I don't know if there's any way to, like, if that, like, turns on any audio or anything. Oh, no, that totally screwed that up. Okay, that was weird. So let me do this. Okay, it's just, like, changing some of the settings, but it should be back in a second. Yeah, for some reason, no audio coming through. I thought it did for at least Davok, but it is what it is. All right, so Ekaz is expanding quite well, and now going to be grabbing some rare minerals, and also expanding it towards the Harkonnen. So they're on their way. Down to the west, or south, we have the Fremen. 
they're sitting on a big army. I mean, it, it, you want to be doing something with that army for sure. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they sandwiched in and just went after the uh, went after someone. Harkonnens have that middle too, which is very nice for them. That's going to be a big water boost, and um, people tend to leave Harkonnens alone in my experience. I've noticed that. You know, usually they don't get attacked early on. Yeah, they have pretty good militaries early. Okay, so Fremen just chilling out. Looks like he's going to be sending uh, some troopers out to go grab things around the map. Fremen have a big force, though. He's already at 45 military supply. And if we take a look over at Davok, Davok is sitting at 30, and Doghead is sitting at 32. So the Fremen, hands down, hands down, have the, uh, have the best. Uh, I can't increase the resolution because it's from the players. So whatever the players are capable of generating, that's going to be the case. So Underworld Headquarters being set up by these smugglers. So he's setting them up all across the lands. Obviously going to be targeting the Harkonnens, right? That's that's 100% the case. So what's the name of his YouTube channel? It's just Davok. Yeah, it's exactly as, as, as it would sound. All right. Snipers getting ready to pop out. Very good defensive unit. Nope, not going to make any snipers. Just going to be staying with mostly uh, demolishers. And it looks like he does have his hero character now. So he is going to be uh, quite a bit stronger than other players who do not have heroes. The heroes make a pretty big impact. And uh, the Fremen are still at 7k heads. They need to get some territory, man. He's sitting on 192 uh, authority right now. So he needs to grab something big and, and get to 10k. And also start like being aggressive, I think. I think he needs to he needs to get a little bit crazy. So he's going to put it on Landsrad. Yep, going for Landsrad levels. Not bad. Um, looking at this... Looks like he was maybe scheming some assassination, is he? Oh, no, counterintelligence. Okay, so he's going on counterintel. Sadly, there's not going to be too many prison shanks this game. Um, there's no Vernius in the game, and um, assassinating isn't, like, super common. It's very good, though. It's very, very good. With there's a Ver if there's a Vernius player, it's pretty much auto. Like, everybody's going to be, you know, preparing for assassinations. Although the Vernius assassinations did get nerfed the other day. There was an update, like, a couple days ago where they nerfed it. Um, what they did is they made it... She used to give 100% of your knowledge as Intel, the Avernius agent, but now she only gives 50%. And she gives you a little money, but it's still a big nerf. Yeah, still a big nerf indeed. So, back to Davox perspective, he's expanding around the map in just classic ECAS style, setting up masterpieces, which are going to boost his lands rat every time he builds them. And he's got smuggler neighbors. They're going to, it's, it might seem peaceful now. But I can assure you, this game is going to be turning into a powder keg of uh, action very quickly. That's kind of how it goes. There's like a build-up period. Sometimes there's like early squabbles and battling, and it's going to be Whitmore Bud. So the hero character for Davok is Whitmore. Um, he's really good because he counts as a third champion. So it's brutal. So Ekaz can technically get three champions, and then they can uh, just get some of the craziest hegemony pushes you've ever seen. It's nuts. Angry Viking, always good to see you live, big man. Best strategy content on the platform with the coolest host. Thank you, man. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Really, really appreciate that. Yeah, Fremen assassins aren't bad. Fremen can do some work, especially with Mother Amalo, because Mother Amalo gives you passive uh, intel, so she can build you. Um, she can build you up some intel, which is nice. So Davok obviously going to take those rare minerals there. That'd be that'd be certainly something you don't want to skip. It's a very very good one. Harkonnens are looking a little bit kind of like pinned in. Um, they got the middle. He's got his big, thick Harkonnen dong in the middle there. But um, aside from that, he hasn't expanded out too far. Probably mostly expanding in the more cautious areas of the base. Uh, yeah, there was big buffs for the Vernius. Yeah, I feel like Vernius gets countered too easily by EMP bomb, though. It's like one... You can dodge it with your mothership, though. Like, if you have the mothership of Vernius, you can dodge it. Uh, you can teleport away when they EMP bomb you. But that still is you running, right? It's It's... It's, it's not always ideal. Uh, anyways, Dirty Dan, he's got a big army. You could see he's eyeing the smugglers. Clearly, Dirty Dan wants it. He wants to get a little bit crazy there. He's going to be taking his spec region on the bottom. He's got 200 and plus authority, yeah, like 225 or something like that. It's a little bit hard to see with the, uh, with the you know, pixelation. Some of the players are going to have higher quality than others because it does depend on their internet. But, you know, it is what it is. So spec region on the bottom going to be taken. I believe that's the one that gives you extra rare mineral income. So not bad for the Fremen. We got a message going out. Can I give you uh... Oh, he says, can I pause one minute and go to the bathroom? Okay, yeah. So he's just asking to pause, which is fine. The iron bladder has failed him. And now he's going to need a, a quick break. So they're going to pause for one minute. And we got a little bit of time, man. All right, all right. One way to put it, I guess. Yeah, it is one way to put it. It is. So let's look at chat and see what you guys are thinking in terms of the votes. So you guys have your money on ECAS. Wow. All right. We got some Davok fans in here. All right. I love it. So you guys think the ECAS is going to pull this one out. 
The poor Baron, dude. Look at the Baron just sitting in the pits. Honestly, if, as, of the factions, I would say the power level of these factions, Ecas is probably the strongest, followed by Smugglers and Fremen, and then the Baron is probably the weaker of the four. But that doesn't mean the weak factions can't win in this game. It just kind of means that you're you're a bit more of a submarine. Like you need to be the second place player and then hammer down the highest player and then, you know, that's what we failed at in our game, right? Like for me to have won that game, we needed to put Carino down and then I can like kind of weasel out of victory from there, but we weren't able to do it. What is the most common win com? Probably hedge. Yeah. Chome is one of the less common ones because Chome is, is super contested, right? Like everybody can block Chome by buying Chome. And on top of that, there's several things that, um, political things that come up that block Chome also. They deny buying, someone loses their shares. There's a lot of stuff that's very, very painful, right? Yeah, very painful indeed. Yeah, so it's good, man. The Baron is underestimated, of course he is. It's, it's very standard fare. So Militia being added here by Dirty Dan, because even when the game's paused, you can go queue things up, right? So you could like look around your territories, you can do a little bit of fine tuning. So it's probably nice for the players to be able to kind of jump around and do it. Yeah, Ekaz has got like a really S tier position. Uh, the terrain is a little rough for them in some ways, but like they're so far north and like hard to reach that um, like the Fremen, the Fremen could worm there, but some of the other factions would have problems. The Fremen can also spawn armies out of sieges, which is really good. So um, they have to have they have to like know where it is and everything, right? To really plan that, but we'll see. Who is the strongest strongest lands rad? Oh, hands down, Ekaz, I think Ekaz and Atreides. Um, Ekaz are like gods here on politics because they have a counselor that lets them become immune to loss of rights. So if Ekaz gets governor, you can't stop them. You have to kill them because they can become immune to loss of rights. Yeah. Ekaz is a, like a gods here faction. They're really good. And obviously today is the tournament. So players are going to usually play the strongest factions, you know? Yeah. Ekaz rocking five spice right now. Davok is looking pretty tyrannical. You see how he can apply immunity to anything there? And look at that, like the Chome is blocked right here. So they can just block the Baron or whoever from buying Chome if they want to. Ika is already up to 300 lands rad too. So I think Davok is going to be doing some big scheme in there. Uh, he's going to maybe think about getting the lands rad. Yeah, it looks like Davok is going to put all his votes into lands rad there. Trying to get it for himself. And um, I doubt Dirty Dan is doing anything with the uh, politics. It looks like Doghead already did, did his vote. So we did miss that, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Martin. Well, hopefully you're feeling better, man. <laughs> Ecaz is unfair, can basically lock down win cons. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty busted. I don't think they're like like absurdly bro like broken per se, but they're like they're the best faction, in my opinion. Like I you should never I yeah, typically teaming up on Ecaz is gonna be pretty necessary. Um they're kinda they kind of feel like Carino of old, like Carino pre patch, when they could just like really just always be the biggest threat. Yeah. And plus you get three champions too. Like having three champions is just insane because the amount of hegemony you can farm and like, if you're at like 25K and you win a big army fight, like decisively, you can just get like several thousand hedge like instantly. It's, it's pretty insane. Uh, so everyone is watching this blur. Yeah, yeah. So we're streaming the perspective of the players because there's no observer mode in this game. So we're having to do it really haggard. So hopefully it's survivable for you guys. Uh, it's really our only option. I mean, next time we're going to be trying the... We could try a Discord stream next time to see if the quality is better and the audio is better and everything. Um, but yeah, this is... We're trying something fancy. We're trying something fancy here today. So Dirty Dan eyeing the Southern Territories. Oh, is he thinking about it? Okay, he's not going to be attacking. He's getting some Fidekin though, which is usually an indication of aggression. Fremen have 55 uh, military power right now. They have 55 command points. And uh, yeah, what's his hero going to be? Is he going to go for Shawnee? I like Shawnee personally. I think the ambushes are really fun. So he's getting outpost logistics to get Arrakis. And then he's going to be getting Wonders of the Desert. And then he's going to go Eco from there. And then he's going to go there. Okay. So Wonders of the Desert and outpost logistics are pretty good. Outpost logistics lets you put another agent on Arrakis. So that's for going for hedge and expansion victories. Uh, he does not have the research yet. Or is it the resources to get his hero? It's hard to tell. Dude, Discord streams much better, tried and true. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. We'll we'll give it we'll give it some uh I know the blur is nostalgic. It's taken us back to the early 2000s, baby. It really is. Wow, one, two, three. It's gonna be what, six spice for the Fremen? That's a lot of income, man. Um you, you could see he's eyeing doghead here. He's he wants a piece. Um I feel like their inevitable peace or their inevitable conflict is gonna come and the peace is gonna be broken. Uh, I think I think they're going to end up fighting, man. 
I think it's going to be going down. Yeah, he, he even has an Ornithopter following the Smuggler Army, it looks like. So let's take a look at heroes. No heroes for the Fremen yet. Um, for Davok, Davok has Whitmore Bud. And it looks like he's getting some War Banners out. War Banners are really, really good, obviously. And um, looking at old Doghead. Doghead, uh, I think I can't quite see. I don't know that counts off the top of my head. I think it's Drisk or something. Okay, Harkonnen's sending a... <laughs> Harkonnen's trying to get a financial agreement with everybody. And everybody's like, no, we're not going to do it. We're not doing it. Uh, Spacing Guild, yeah. So he's putting down craft workshops now, man. Doghead going pretty bananas. But I mean, Daybok is going to come down like a hammer at some point. Nobody has been messing with Davok at all. Um, the hedge is pretty close. You can see here, uh, it's neck and neck with a lot of players. Harkonnens are actually really high up on hedge. It would be pretty funny to see the Harkonnens go for like an early hedge play. There's so many unexplored play styles in this game, which is fun. Like, yes, factions have their intuitive play styles, but then there's like these weird techs you can do that are pretty viable. I, I really, that's what I love about this game. Yeah, that's what I really like about this game. All right, so they're going to keep chasing here. And, uh, and yeah, they're going to roll back this way. And if we have a little bit of time after this, we could even do another game. We could do like a uh, just a, a fun game in the community, depending on how long this one goes. So they're heading back to the base. We do see Doghead just kind of chilling out and getting his passive hedge. Uh, he's got one, two, three special regions, it looks like. Uh, yeah, three spec regions, all of which are going to be producing passive hedge right now, I think. I think he maybe has two of them producing. I don't think the third one is. Uh, still very, very strong. Dirty Dan is building Fidekin, and um, he has not... <laughs> mind your own business, says Davok. Okay, so Davok telling them to mind their own business. You gotta love it. Big Fremen military coming out. Is he gonna get crunk, though, or is he just gonna keep chilling? I don't know. And we, of course, can't see the Baron's perspective, which is a shame. Davok is snooping around. Okay, Davok? I actually think Davok might beat up the Baron. Because the thing is, if the Fremen in the smugglers fight, and then Davok karate chops the Baron with the Ekaz armies, he can not only farm Hedge, but he's also going to be um, expanding, getting a ton of expansion territory in the south, right? Which I think is going to be very good. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of manpower, though. So Davok's military isn't very strong. He's only got 38 uh, current military power, so nothing too crazy. But we'll, he'll perhaps catch up at some point. This is scratching by Magic Commander. It, it does. It's very, it's very much in the ballpark. Hmm. We saw Ekaz doing something with the Sanctuary with the Solaris uh, icon. Oh, so, so he's pillaging it, probably. Yeah. That little icon in the sanctu Sanctuaries? Yeah, it probably means he was he was probably pillaging it earlier. Because, uh, ironically, Ekaz can uh, can pillage their uh, Sanctuaries. Okay, I think he's... Is he going to attack the Baron? No way. The Baron had a pretty good military. Vahu, uh, Vahu Hall is his name, I believe. He... Um, yeah, he had a good force early on. It's been a while since we've seen him. And we see the third, he's going to be going for recruitment center, which is very standard. Typically, it's command post, recruitment center. Um, the first, the manpower one can vary. Ekaz maybe doesn't need the manpower as badly since they have very elite armies. So, the, yeah, I don't know, but they, they are tough to replace. Got great news today with a job offer. Hey, Max Ben Jim, hell yeah, dude. Had a great time playing today, too. Dave Ock is awesome. Yeah, he's really good and very friendly, too. He's, he's a great guy. There are a lot of like competitive communities that are very like unpleasant to be in and you know but the the dune community we have in our discord is is very they're competitive but we have a lot of new players and everybody's very friendly so if you're brand new you can get into games and uh you know if you tell people you're new i mean you're gonna you're gonna be okay you're gonna be fine so yeah i'm, I'm curious if he's gonna attack there dirty dan in the meantime just kind of eyeing as well this is like the boiler kind of the calm before the storm but doghead is going to rapidly reach an obscene amount of, uh, of of hedge. He's currently sitting at 14k with a passive 20, which is pretty nuts. If you look up in the top, you can see the passive is 14 point or 14.1 with 20 passive, which is um, which is pretty insane. It's it's pretty crunk. The Dune community is prone to salt, but you guys are lovely. Yeah, I mean it can get salty, but you know we don't we try we try not to tolerate that in our community. You know, like if people are being rude and salty, and yeah, there's just not gonna not gonna not gonna fly. Now, lands rad's popping up in two seconds. Let's see what the votes are. So we have labor rights. So what that does is it makes it so all of your military units cost you more money. Agenda contracts just switches how you propose things in the lands rad. And we have economy punishment. So the economy one will slow down economy development. So we'll see what they decide to vote. Um, nothing really matters here. He's going to deny that with all of his votes because um, the smuggler economy is pretty bad right now. Uh, outside of pillaging so okay he's valuable trinkets geothermal he does not have a lot of spice going so it's really interesting how doghead plays like he doesn't play spice too hard early on 
He's getting underworld bribes. Okay, so he's going to be playing governor. So Doghead looks like he's going to be playing for governor and then obviously having a secondary win con of, uh, of Hedge. Yeah, that looks like... I mean, what political factions are in the game? Aside from smugglers, we do have Davehawk. The Baron almost never plays politics. Um, I mean, he'll scheme and stuff, but he doesn't really play the Landsrad too much. And Fremen, obviously, they can, but yeah, it's it's not it's not as crazy. I think the average age of Terrence community works in his favor. Yeah, we have a we have a bit of an, a crustier community for sure. Yeah, a lot of millennials. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Per game salt is fine. Multi game vendettas, however, yeah, you can't have that. Yeah, I mean, understandably, people get salty if they're getting teamed up on, but it's an FFA game. Uh, it's going to happen. Okay, so Dirty Dan and Doghead are scheming. Okay. They're talking right now. He says, Hedge Race 1v1 each other. Okay. So what they're saying right now is they're scheming against Davok. They're basically saying like, hey, Davok's kind of doing his own thing on the top. And you and I can Hedge Race later on. Maybe let's consider dealing with Davok. Oh, interesting. Okay, guys. So right now, they're scheming against Davok. So it looks like they're going to be going to the north. Maybe. At least the smugglers might. Who knows? They're still pillaging. Davok, in the meantime, looking pretty powerful himself. And um, he... Wow, look at that main base region. So he's got a lot of eco buildings. Looks like thinking about water, intelligence agency, or lands red headquarters. He's all in on the votes. He does have administrative hall. So that's the one that gives you passive authority. And now he's going to be getting Landsrad headquarters to in get, increase his maximum vote. So Davok wants to have like Hedge with a um, probably a backup of Governor as well. So him and Doghead playing a very, very similar style. Very, very similar style. Dude, look at that spice operation. Look, he's even flexing on us and showing us. He's like clicking on every single one. Just showing us all those goodies, man. Oh, man, that's really, really good. Yeah. That's wild, man. That's wild. So, ladies and gentlemen... How are we looking? Uh, is he going to get more elite knights? He is. So the big fancy knights are coming out. No armory upgrades yet. Very interesting. He hasn't done that. Maybe he was like thinking about it. But yeah, you can see he's going to be getting all his armory upgrades here. And again, sorry for the quality. Nothing we can do. The players are streaming their perspective. So we'll try Discord next time and see if that works a little bit better. We will see. All right. So big army for Davok now. He's got over 60 military supply. War banners, squires, knights, Whitmore bud. I assume he'll be promoting champions when he's ready to do his hedge push. Um, dirty down on the bottom. Oh, it looks like he missed a fight. So Shawnee is now coming. No, he's actually going for the other character. He's going for Othheim. Okay. But um, it looks like the Harkonnens just smashed the Fremen. Um, there was a fight in the Harkonnen lands. And uh, the Fremen army got karate chopped. The Harkonnens even going after the Spice Harvester there. But um, yeah, it looks like combat drugs was used. And the Baron says, uh, I can't quite see what he's saying, but clearly something towards the Fremen. Some sort of foul scheming is going. Yes, yes. So those two are going to be battling it out. Um, I think they're politicking against the North, saying that the other players are a bigger threat, and let's like leave one another in check. Fremen Eco is pretty good. He's getting a... Wow, Fremen are getting a lot. He's getting like five or 600. Wow, that's a lot. And then looking at Doghead's Eco, he's still in the negative. So Doghead literally is just living off freaking uh, pillaging. Uh, Davok is pretty rich. Wow, Davok at 1.1k. So Davok is loaded financially. All those village traits. Um, Doghead is posturing in the west, though. So Doghead is over, and he's looking to go, dude. I think he wants to fight. Davok, though, can probably fly over. You can see he's got his mission to get some chome shares if he wants. I'm um, taking the special minerals there. Uh, players are approaching 20k hedge at this point, guys. They're getting there. Yeah, they're preparing to party. Now, where is he going to go with this army? Does he have an airfield? Is, is that the question? Is he going to be able to actually maneuver across the map if he needs to? Dirty Dan just kind of licking his wounds after being beaten down by the Harkonnens. And Doghead in the north is going to continue pillaging. It's the only thing that's keeping his economy afloat is just running around the map and pillaging. And yeah, smugglers are good at it. That's, that's something they, uh, they do quite well. They do it quite well indeed. So I will shoot down the Thopter. Oh, Doghead saying I'm going to shoot down Ornithopters. That, uh, I'm not going to attack you, says Doghead, to the Fremen. Okay. So he's making peace with the Fremen for now. And wow, Doghead doesn't even like really spend much on Militia. Like he leaves his bases kind of empty, or at least a couple of them. You can see, like I'm always so paranoid about that. Like I always am like filling up all my bases with Militia just to be safe. But interesting, interesting. He says we will both lose if we continue is what he said. Thank you, thank you. You're able to zoom in and check that, huh? The Fremen want the deep desert, and um, and then Doghead says no. <laughs> he just says, poor, poor Dirty Dan, dude. Dirty Dan, 
he had his moment in the sun early on, but he's kind of getting stuffed in right now. Like Dirty Dan is playing Fremen, and if Fremen get trapped and can't expand anymore, dude, that feels really, really bad. Um, so he's going to need to find a way to be able to expand. So currently Fremen at 13.4k hedge with 24 passive. Daybok has basically no passive, but he's at 15.9. And Doghead's at 16.3 with 20 passive hedge. So he's getting a lot. I don't know if you can uh, keep fighting. Okay, so basically the Fremen are trying to haggle to get that deep desert, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Praying for my smug boy, says Air. Uh, that economy is haggard, thank God for pillage. Yeah, it's working for him though. And Doghead is, is one of our stronger players in Discord, so clearly he's, he's doing something right, you know? He's doing something right. Now up in the north. Oh, was that an administrative burden going down? What? So we just had an administrative burden put down on the smuggler base. And now we have the airfield coming. So smugglers have had the spaceship wreck for a long time. So they're able to get their um, they're able to get their uh, their ship now. It looks like yeah, they have enough supplies. Who the hell put administrative burden down on the smuggler base? That is weird. That is very very strange. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, that's the one that blocks them from building units. All right, so those two are just kind of chatting it up. Dirty Dan is obviously politicking here. They're 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 like kind of flexing on one another. You know, subtle threats and whatnot. Davok in the north is just being Davok is basically getting to play SimCity. You know, he's he's playing like a single player RPG over here. Yeah, the early aggro from Fremen is really good, but I don't think his build is correct for it. I think if you're gonna go early aggro on Fremen, you need to go with Stilgar and get Stalwart Alliance to get those free armies popping out. Because that basically just shuts people down. It's very, very strong. Alright, so what is here? The Eye of the Council. It's the Eye of the Council. Chome shares plus 50. Um, the elected faction gains that. Looks like Harkonnens have rubbed their taint on that, which means they want it. So the Baron is going to want the Chome shares. Um, and then we got a smuggler bounty on Eye of the Council. So Ekaz doesn't care, though. Ekaz is actually trying to beat the bounty. Um, interesting. So Ekaz going in. And Ekaz beats the smugglers by like 10 votes or something. Wow. 481 against 470, I think. So they just got two free agents. So Dog Doghead just got owned a little bit right there in the voting. Uh, he put a bounty on that, but the other players didn't take the bait. I'm surprised the Baron didn't put his vote, I don't think, on that. And now look at that. He's going to be buying some chum as well. He's at 8K. Okay. So Davok winning the Eye of the Council against Doghead. Pretty crunk. Pretty crunk. Doghead over here. Uh, he's got that passive hedge creeping. He's at 16.4. I mean, guys, people are going to be closing in on uh, 20k soon. And that's when the powder keg really gets going. Like, really, really gets going. Play the game all day, every day, baby. Hell yeah. I love this game. It's so much fun. The scheming, the fighting, the RTS elements, the faction dynamics. It's just uh, it's such a good time. We're going to do one more community game after this as well. Um, I think we're going to. I have the itch to play a little bit more. This game does not have spectator mode. That's why we're having to do this really haggard shit where we're like watching through like uh, a stream that they're sharing. I, the council on ECAS is good. Yeah, getting extra agents is always quite nice. So trafficking station. So smugglers are going to be stealing spice from the northern uh, northwest ECAS base. So that steals a percentage of their spice, which is good. Um, military tech, man, Doghead only has 12.5 knowledge. So his research is very potato. Um, so he's certainly going to be very slow to develop his techs, but he's going into military tech right now. So clearly he's going to be looking for some action here soon. Once he gets his Wraith, the Wraith is really good against Ekaz, incredibly good. Wow, look at that. They have three villages there, or three uh, manpower buildings there. He's setting up under cities and uh, yeah, he's just kind of plopping them down. He's going for the Landsrad one. So he's putting Landsrad in the Undercity. So then he gets one Landsrad from those, um, which is pretty good. Yeah, Ekaz is probably going to be pretty scary. Um, we, we have no idea what the Baron's up to because we don't have his perspective. His internet is too bad to stream to us. So we don't have that. But um, hopefully they add spectator mode, man. I mean, it doesn't seem like it'd be too hard to do. And um, yep, he's, he's putting, he's stealing money. He's doing some, uh, looks like stealing fuel cells and then Landsrad. So that's kind of his recipe. Obviously, it varies based on the bases, but he's just getting all these undercities going. And he set 24 passive hedge now. That's pretty good. I mean, that's really quite strong for this point in the game. Activate windows. I love it. I love that we're getting the activate windows. Dirty Dirty Dan has military propaganda. Wonders of the desert and outpost logistics. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, no Fremen in politics whatsoever, though. He's not even touching the blue tree. Stalwart Alliance is god tier um, in terms of early military. It does fall off a little bit late game, but it's still very good. Uh, it looks like a spice field may have been taken away from him by Doghead. And down in the south here, what is he going to get? Some H2O, obviously. 
Uh, not, water is very good for Fremen because it gives you knowledge. It gives you knowledge, yeah. Yes, eye is great for them because it lowers the chance of their knights getting one-shotted. Interesting, interesting, okay. So smugs, more scheming. Oh, the Baron says, wait for me. Okay, so there is some scheme going. The, okay, I think Dirty, Dirty Dan and the Baron are going to be attacking the smugglers. But we've seen how good he is at holding 2v1. Last game, Doghead was able to hold 2v1 pretty well against myself, as well as the Fremen player. Uh, you might need a 3v1 against him, but I, I would be 100% certain that old Davok would be willing. Fremen are going to be trading for ship parts now. Definitely want to use Plascrete instead of money. He's Dirty Dan's got some high APMs for sure. He, he clicks pretty quick. Bad Jabs would love to hear interest in casting it like you are turn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think it'd be great. I mean, I would I, like if we had a good spectator tool with game sound and good quality, dude. That would just be that would be amazing. All right. Is there any info from devs? Uh, there's a couple of settings Arkin you can do that can fix the performance. Um, yeah, you, you definitely can. Okay. So the Baron and Dirty Dan, I think, are planning something. Davok is just playing SimCity. He's he's just doing his own thing. Although, is he going to attack now? We see Davok rolling down into the Baron's land, which would be a big win for Doghead, right? Because then he wouldn't need to um, he wouldn't need to worry. Looks like Davok fully reinforcing his border territories. No, he's just taking more territory. So the Baron is very nervous right now. You can see his fat, chubby cheeks are sweating. He sees the Ekaz army. The Baron might be able to take him on, though. In his own lands, if the Baron has the defensive advantage with, like, military bases, maybe. But he gets in there, and he's going to take that. All right. So that region is going to be grabbed. And that is a very, very uh, aggressive, aggressive play against the Chonk, right? Like, setting up right on his territory is... Yeah, this is 2007 YouTube right now, baby. I put it on HD, but it's still pixelated. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to matter, because it's the players streaming to us from their potatoes, so we don't know. Okay, we're gonna get a fight here. Uh, this is gonna be potentially a big hedge jump. I don't know how many champions are there, but yeah, he's got epic quest and he's gonna be attacking in. So the fight is on, Harkonnen's taking massive casualties out of the gates. Um, Whitmore Bud, of course, is a very, very powerful character. Uh, Harkonnen's kind of getting steamrolled a little bit. It looks like, man, and look at that, Glossy Robin is gonna get punished. He's a little bit deep in the ranks. He's running through, overall guns doing big DPS and the Harkonnen army gets folded like a piece of paper. Not a single Ika. I think like Ika has lost one unit. Oh my God. That was just pure, pure unadulterated filth. And on that note, we see Davok jumping up to almost 20K. Oh my God. Oh my God. He got absolutely pounded, dude. Absolutely pounded. Jesus. So the Baron is probably like dead. If Davok wants to just keep punishing him, he's probably going to be able to. And Davok just turned on auto buy chome shares. Okay, now the Baron's going to be losing another Spice Field. Yeah, that was brutal. The Baron's army just got absolutely karate chopped. It, it, we see administrative burdens going down on Davok, but it doesn't matter because he didn't lose anything. So the Baron countered him with administrative burdens. Good, good God, they got bullied. I know, Ekaz, yeah, I mean, Ekaz is pretty god tier, guys. Um, and his army was probably better than the Baron's. The Baron had a lot of Cerberus in his army, and they're, they're not like a good sustainable unit. They're good to mix in a couple, but... Yeah, I think the, the Chonk is going to be in massive danger. Okay, Davok, guys, is at 20k hedge. He could straight up take this game over. Um, yeah, he's got the research. Okay, look at that. So Davok is deleting the research center. Oh, clever creature. So Davok deleted the research center in his base. And what that does is it takes away your authority, your uh, hegemony uh, bonus. So it put him back below 20k while he secures more, and then he rebuilds it later to get a jump because it works retroactively. So, oh man, is, is he gonna win that too? Okay, is he gonna try and get the Water Sellers Union? Uh, as far as votes, I think Smugglers might have him. No, Smugglers and him, no, yeah, Ekaz wins that. Jesus Christ, e Ekaz has 453 free votes. How's that even possible, dude? See, I don't play Ekaz, so I don't know how this works, but oh my God, Ekaz, Ekaz is, uh, yeah, he's trying to politic. He says, I only have four water, says Davok. Dude, at this point, you just can't listen. You just can't listen. You gotta, everybody's gotta turn on Nika soon. The Baron should be squealing. He needs to be like a pig squealing and just telling him like, hey guys, I'm getting my butt kicked over here. This isn't good. Uh, yeah. So from here, Ekaz probably gonna win Water Sellers Union. No, Smugglers beat him. So Doghead beat him to it. Um, Doghead has... Doghead has 36 water too, and now Doghead is making 500 Solari, so that's really good. Yeah, his that Water Seller's Union saved him. 
And now Doghead is starting to boom his economy as well. So military is all about. Fremen, Dirty Dan actually getting in on the smugglers a little bit. So look at that. Dirty Dan attacked in and uh, is threatening to take one of the smuggler bases. So this is when conflict starts to erupt all over the map, right? We see the Baron. Oh my God. The Baron is getting squeezed like a pig here. And just like, uh, yeah, he's probably going to have a bad time. Uh, Ekaz is going to continue punishing him. Doghead and the smugglers, or Doghead and the Fremen are fighting. So Dirty Dan and Doghead are going at it. And if we look at Doghead over here, um, he's looking pretty good. His hedge is, uh, what is his hedge at? Looks like 17.5k. So yeah, he's got the passive hedge though. It's really good. He's up to 26. So that's going to be strong. Military base. It looks like he's setting up a military base there with the intention of attacking Davok at some point. You're probably going to want to make peace with the Fremen and then try and uh, take on Davok soon, I would imagine. Now back to Davok. He's going to be taking the Baron Spice Field. And it already is like coming pre-built. It's going to have all the goodies there as well. Dude, he's going to be on six Spice Harvesters, which is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Which means you can't pull votes. Yeah, this is going to be nuts. Biggest problem now is that there's two Gov contenders. There it is. There is for sure. And Davok jumps up to 20. He gets rid of the Office of the Order, but he's just like, I'm just going to keep everything else here, right? He gets his heavies. Probably going to be stacking missile turrets here, I would wager. Let's see. Now he's thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, his water is actually too low. He's destroying buildings to get H2O. Is he going to build water? It is a five water region. You might just have to, dude. Yeah, he wants a missile turret, but he has no water. So yeah, he's going to have to go H2O. Um, And yeah, he's at 20k. Baron actually has the second most, which is pretty wild. I actually don't know how he's doing that. Here comes the chonk again. Are you guys ready for the chonk round two? Um, Davok is going to get a shit ton of hedge if he wins this fight. Because he's got Whitmore, who's the champion. He's forming ranks, but the Baron is coming with a better army this time. He's got a lot of executioners and not much range, though. Like, where is the DPS in that, that Baron army? I guess his melee does good damage, but the problem for the Baron is he doesn't have a lot of range DPS, like Demolishers. Oh, my God. I think the Baron's getting steamrolled again, guys. Oh, my God. It's a massacre, I think. Dude, the ECAs are losing nothing, bro. Oh, my God. And the Baron just gets dicked so hard. Oh, he needs the ranged units. The Baron is not using uh, his Devastators, which do good damage against the heavy stuff. Um, Jesus, dude, Davok lost like one unit. He lost one unit. Oh, the Baron needs to squeal. He really does, because he's just getting absolutely punished. <laughs> oh my God, that was so one-sided. That was so one-sided again. The Dong is having a bad time, dude. The Dong is, oh, look at that, Fremen ambush. So the Fremen have appeared in Davok's base, but you guys, okay, Davok's going for the win now. He's just, he doesn't, he's going full villain. So the Baron getting squashed. Um, you know, the Harkonnen player complaining, obviously. <laughs> Missile turrets coming up and there's going to be probably uh, more water being taken here. I would wager, yeah, more water. And now Ekaz is going to go north. And um, no, there was not much microing in that fight. There was like zero microing. Uh, he just like literally let the army fight. We can see it. Which you don't really, in this game, micro does matter, but in the big fight, sometimes it's just like, just let Jesus take the wheel, you know? Um, okay, so this, are you guys about to, you guys are ready to, <laughs> hey, you guys want to see a dead body? <laughs> well, here you go. You're about to see this Fremen army get absolutely shadow realmed. So Davok's up to 22. Doghead needs to attack him. Epic quest going down, and um, he's buying Chome shares. Wow, he's going Chome as well. Dude, he's going bananas. And oh my God, oh my God, the Fremen are going to get it too. Uh, Fremen are putting up a better fight. Uh, he's targeting the range units well, and we do see the Shai Halud coming out. Ekaz cannot afford to lose its army, so they need to move everyone out of the sand now. But um, it is going to be um, it is going to be a brutal one. So he moves his army into cover. Fremen are still fighting hard. Where's Doghead though? Okay, Doghead is going to be attacking him as well now, and administrative burden is on Davok as well. So are they going to be able to slay the Davok at twenty five k? on terms of hedge and he's up to 26 almost because of the triple champion oh my god Ekaz is so gross and now his whole army survived the fremen he basically lost nothing so now oh my god davok's gonna get a big jump once his um his research center finishes here yeah he's gonna switch he's gonna get the knowledge center that's gonna give him a big big uh jump in terms of that now he just needs to defeat dog if he defeats doghead's army then he probably wins the game he probably wins it you want to see emotionally scarred Oh my god. So the champion, if Whitmore dies, that can slow him down. But the problem is if the Baron keeps trying to attack and getting wiped, it's going to feed him. We see Doghead going for some counterplay on the other side. But old Davok is looking to be pretty Giga Chad here, guys. He's looking very, very strong. GG's, I'm accepting bets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so he is at 26.2. 
The Baron is coming. Who do you attack? Do you go just wipe out the Baron army again? Because that's like free ELO. <laughs> It's Freelo. He's going for it. All right. So he's going to head down south. He's attacking the Baron because he knows that's going to give him a shit ton of hedge because the Baron's just been getting dicked over and over in these fights. Um, he is being decapped on the other side, but he has a little bit of time. The Baron's army's already dead, basically, because of the missile turrets. Oh, that's going to be so much, dude. The Baron's going to give Davok the game, maybe. Oh, wow. Okay. So looking at this, he's at 26.7, 26.8. 27k and the taxes were just paid okay he's at 28 now oh my god and the baron is did he get whitmore no whitmore is still going and um i mean it is hurting davox army to be fair so it's going to take him a minute to rebuild um and the ecas are not very good at rebuilding that's one thing they don't do very well um but yeah guys he's close to winning but i think doghead will decap a little bit so Doghead's going to decap two territories. That will slow him down quite a bit. But, I mean, he's very, very close to getting it. The administrative burden on his base, though, is very strong. It's very, very strong. So Doghead is just decapping here. Dirty Dan, in the meantime, is just looking around. He's like, shit, what can I do? Yeah, everyone's, like, panicking and looking at all these things. But back to Davok's perspective here. Um, he does take down the Har That Harkonnen army put up a way better fight for some reason. Um, he managed to keep his champions alive, uh, I believe. Yeah, at least one. Yeah, two of the champions are alive. Okay. So he lost his territories, but he does farm the Harkonnens. And man, that Harkonnen, why is that guy? Oh, he's got the plus 10 armor thing. Okay, that's what it is. Report Baron for feeding. No, that was a, the Baron actually put up a good fight there. Like he did a lot of damage. That, that was a pretty big play. Um, Davok needs to be able to buy mercenaries. So he wants the Eye of the Council so he can train Landsrad judges. That's insanely good because then he's going to be able to muster a huge army very quickly. I believe they train very fast, so we're gonna see. Yeah, he has he's been burdened for a long time. So yeah, Ikaz appears to have more votes than Doghead. Doghead's quality seems a little better on his stream, but Doghead has 459, Ikaz has 380, but Ikaz has free votes. Um they're they're scheming. He says vote Hark for judge. So they're trying to give the Harkonnens judge. Oh, what a dirty dog. He says vote Harks for judge, and then he votes for himself. Maybe he's trying to, like, throw people off a little bit. Who knows? Okay. I don't know. We're going to see who wins this. So this is a big one right here. Uh, there it goes. What's it going to be? Who's going to win it, baby? Who's going to win it? And Doghead wins it against the Harks. And, oh, okay. So he went for Landsrad Witnesses to get some Landsrad Guards. So Ekaz got the free units. That's actually really good for them. So that's going to give him a couple, a couple dude bros. And then he's going to run back up. He's going to lose a couple territories, though. Uh, his passive, he doesn't have any, like, craft workshops or anything. Yeah, you can see he's seeing Doghead won that. But he does get his Landsrad guards. Doghead's about to decap him pretty hard on the other side, though, which is going to slow him down. So that was a good play by old Doghead. But Davok is incredibly close to winning. Incredibly close. Um, he's only a couple thousand away. I mean, taxes will come into play. If somebody f fumbles, like if the Fremen come in and lose. Oh, he's going for the cap on his spec region now. He's going to go for the cap on the spec region while Doghead moves into his bases. Uh-oh. Don't get your champions eaten there. Oh, is he canceling that? He cancels it. Why would you cancel that? Oh, he needed the... Did he need the money? Because he just canceled that thing that was going to give him a big jump. That Was that a mistake? Very interesting that he did that. All right. So Ecast is going to be heading up to the north to attack Doghead here, it looks like. He canceled the knowledge building. Oh, he's trying to get governor now. Wow. So he's going to go for a gov. He's, he's basically been burdened this entire time. The administrative burden on his base, like, nonstop. Um, can he take that army of Doghead? I don't know if he can. Why would he have stopped that? I mean, that would have put him up quite a bit. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to hope people will back off him, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Doghead can beat his army because he has the Wraith, and the Harkonnens are going for the south. Yeah, he canceled it, and now he's building it again. Weird. It's very weird. Um, okay, Fremen are attacking as well. Dirty Dan's getting in there. So Dirty Dan is even raiding too. Um, I suspect that, oh man, yeah, if Davok had kept that building and then killed this Fremen army, he might have actually been able to win. Um, maybe. He says, okay, I've lost everything. Watch your, you can't like, you can't say I've lost everything when you're at like 28k hedge, you know, you, like that you can't do. So maybe farming the Fremen army is the way here. Fremen are, they have a little bit of dough. <clears throat> But Ekaz is definitely getting hammered, and that's a sign of a good lobby. When lobbies, uh, when everyone reacts, everyone, like, that's what we needed last game in, in my pod, that's for sure. Um, but Doghead is creeping up. He's, like, submarining in. 
Davok is going to be losing a lot of territories as well. And um, yeah, in the meantime, Davok is just turtling. Let's see if he's fighting anywhere. Fremen taking a couple regions. Uh, he's going to lose another region up there, another spice field. Wow. He's losing a lot of ground, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of his hedge is tied up in his champions too. Um, Davok needs to spell, sell some spice too. He's, he's banking a lot right now. Dude, he's got 33% chome. Ecas can literally do it all. Like he has got chome. He's got powerhouse armies and hedge and governor. The Harks are taking two territories in the south. This is going to put him into the pits a little bit, you know. Hmm. Yeah, well, you can expect the best players to make the top four, right? So they're going to be regulating the lobby very well. I mean, the Harks, the Harks are doing very well, too. Even though some of the fights went rough for them, they're, they're trading quite efficiently. Ika is struggling to rebuild its armies because of the administrative burden. That's just punishing him so freaking hard. Um, he might have been close to winning if he had gone for that building and then attacked the Fremen and farmed them. Maybe, maybe. It would have been kind of tight, but yeah, he's got another guy coming out. Administrative burden's going to take 10 years. It's still wearing off. I'm sure Davok is sweating bullets right now. But I mean, he's getting like good proper 3v1 tier. He's going to go for a governor win here as well. Because Ekaz, you can't push them off governor. It's really brutal. So he's trying to get everyone to back off right now, but I don't know if they will. He's about to lose his entire southern territories. And um, yeah, he's got 500 authority though. I guess he doesn't want to lose his his sanctuary up north. Like that's why he's not decapping that. So he's 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 trying to talk for peace. Uh, his army's not good enough to fight the Fremen probably. Although he could probably fly down and squash those Fremen capping. I think you should do that. Like, do you have the Fremen... You can't afford to lose that, too. That's too much. So, yeah, Davok knows this. He's going to be moving in. And, um, yeah, he's perma-burdened, yeah. Well, the Harkonnens can spam it nonstop pretty well by agent sacrificing with um, with Peter, however the hell you say his name. Uh, and also, smugglers have pretty good intel as well. So, yeah, he's going for the knowledge building, is he? No, not yet. So, Harkonnens are pushing back, dude. Wouldn't it be crazy if we saw, like, just a haggard Harkonnen, like, come back here? Okay, he lost that region there. He's down to 25k, which is... Here's the thing, guys. If you if somebody has 25k, you have to keep, keep killing them. That's still too much. They can't stop going after Davok now. That would be foolish. Um, 25k is still way too much. It's way, way too much. So what's he doing here? Yeah, he's just building up, trying to get those armies back. The administrative burden of the gods has been on him nonstop. Uh, he does have a tech that he needs to pick. He's not picking. It looks like he's typing right now. Uh, but man, he's got like big chome too. Man, Davok is blundering with his spice though. His economy could be much better. He's, he's, he's maxed out on spice and he's not selling. And his exchange rate's so high too. He could have a much, much bigger income. But it's okay. You know, he's under a lot of pressure. So it's easy to make those mistakes. Obviously me watching and not having to um, really give input, you know, is, is uh, or not having to, you know, be under the stress is what I meant to say. It's pretty big. So he mixes in squires to his late game armies. Dirty Dan, what is he doing? Um, Dirty Dan is still scheming away. Doghead is uh, gathering an army in the north. So he's got, let's see, five scavengers, two skirmishers, five, six snipers, uh, free company, and scavenging drones. And it looks like he has a pretty clean army comp. Yeah, pretty clean. Doghead is going to capture all those regions in the north, though, likely. Uh, he's got 145 authority right now, so not too much, actually. But his passive hedge is 48 passive hedge, I think is what that says. It's hard to read that. Or is it 18? It could be 48. Um, Dirty Dan is is definitely probably the weakest in the lobby, I would say. When you are max on spice, it will auto sell. Are you sure? It auto sells at max storage, so he's full selling. Okay, got it. Thank you, guys. I wasn't sure if that was the case. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, little things that I'm missing. Appreciate that. Um, regardless... Siege incentives or Chome support uh, for the Fremen? Yeah, it looks like he's just trying to trying to do whatever he can. Poor Fremen player, dude. Dirty Dan has just been pinned in here in the south for so long. He hasn't been able to really expand. You know, he's got his little, like, Fremen bubble, but that's basically it. Davok, in the meantime, is um, still very close to winning, guys. He's still got, he's still got that huge win con in his back pocket. Um, I think he's going to have to fight the smugglers, and how depending on how this fight goes, will determine everything. His army's kind of small at this point. Can he call in mercenaries? Oh, governorship. Oh, governorship. And Ekaz, you cannot get them off governor. You have to kill them. So you need to apply immunity to that. Yeah, you have to. Because if they get architectural surveys, they're going to get you. you. You have to apply immunity to that. The spice tax thing. Okay. So he applied immunity to architectural surveys, which is God's here. Now his main base can't be sniped easily. And dude, it's, it's Gotham's reckoning. Oh, man. Oh, man. They're saying, yeah, they're all saying, let's finish the job. Let's kill Davok. 
Oh man, he's gonna get Gov. We got assassins coming in, and uh, Mercs would be good too. I think. Is he gonna go for it? That's the question. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dave Oct is nine hundred plus votes, and and then he's putting his free votes here and uh, some free votes here. Yeah. Okay, that, that's kind of cute. All right, so this is it, guys. This is actually a really epic ending, potentially, right? He's going to be holding out under his base, and there's no way to get him off Governor. So all three players, they need to go balls deep, like balls to the wall. I think Davok has a chance here, guys. And there's a bit of a, a tertiary win con here, because if they attack under his base and take massive casualties, he's going to get a ton of hedge. The Harks are moving in already, um, but they need to move in together. This is very hard to coordinate, but all three players, need what they need to do is they need to stick... Get non-aggression packs with one another and stack their armies on top of each other. Doghead also might be able to just win on Hedge. Um, there's a good chance of that. You can see his armies are moving in. But they need to team up right now. All right, guys. The clock is ticking. It's go time, baby. So Ekaz is here. We see the Harkonnens coming from the south side. He's going to start setting up missile turrets, most likely. Yep, missile turrets. And missile turrets there. Missile turrets here. He doesn't own that village. And the smugglers, yeah, they're, they're all like trying to coordinate. It's not easy. He's going to let his mothership get in because he can tank the shots. And now this could be the end of old Davok. We're going to have to see. Oh, man. Here it goes, baby. The fight is on. Militia got triggered by the Harkonnens. A big mistake. And they're just going for his main base. What? Oh, wow. They're not even going to kill his army. I thought they would kill his army. This is a big mistake. This could let Davok win on hedge. They're trying to main base snipe him, which I don't like that. I mean, it could work, but Davok is going to farm a ton of hedge here off the Harkonnen armies. And he might even just win on Hedge if they're not careful. You look, he's, he's skyrocketing right now. He's skyrocketing up. We see the big mothership being shot. Oh, they, they messed up, dude. They should have killed his armies. I mean, maybe it'll pay off later. They do have a lot of time to come back and try again. Okay, it's getting a little bit lower. Main base is at about 20%. It's getting low. Okay, I could have been wrong. They might get the base snipe, but a lot of units are dying now. Davok is clearing off a lot of forces. His base is at about 20%. Archers, not archers, excuse me. This is the Age of Empires. They're blasting away, man. And down goes Davok. He's been defeated. They got it. Wow. That was the right play. Okay, I didn't think they would have the DPS, but they sure did. So now, ladies and gentlemen, everyone's going to be turning on the smugglers. GG, well played, Davok. You were an absolute Chad. I'm sure you'll get a dub in the next one. I feel like he could have still won if he had built that landmark that... Oh, man, Dirty Dan got shy looted. No. I feel like Davok maybe could have won if he had gotten the uh, the building and then just grabbed his spec region. Maybe he could have won on hedge. Maybe. Nailbiter. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was that was savage. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. So Ekas has fallen. Doghead looking to be the biggest nail to be hammered down now. Okay. So we see Dirty Dan going for it. We can't see the, the Baron's perspective, unfortunately, but <clears throat> yeah. The first to fall, but certainly he was very close to winning. I mean, that was the right play. But those those two players, the Baron, they must have had a base, uh, a base, uh, like they probably had siege incentives and all the goodies they needed, right? So smugglers are now on the defense. Um, obviously, the Fremen here are going to get wrecked. They're going to die. It's not like the movies where like two Fremen can take a million people. Uh, all right, so it looks like they get wrecked here on the south. Spec regions being decapped. The Baron is going to be on his way in too. I would wager. And uh, yeah, Fremen are going to kind of keep the reinforcements coming and uh, they're going to try and take that spec region in the south. Doghead looking to be pretty pimping right now, though, because now Doghead can expand into Davox lands as soon as the time comes. GG, what a game. I know this is a really, really good game. You know, the Baron might also have an opportunity to Chome, too, because the Chome shares that Davok had are now going to be up for up for grabs. Right. So bottom is secure. Doghead looking to be pretty comfortable here. I think this would be Doghead's first win. Uh, the triple threat. Don't know why I got picked on yet, yeah, Davok. You know why, bro. <laughs> you know why. Oh, you were so evil that game. You were, you were just so powerful. Just crushing the poor Baron over and over. <clears throat> yeah. So Smuggler is definitely looking to be the favorite right now, but the Baron could show him pretty hard, although we don't see him even close to 40% yet, or at 40%. The Baron's armies are no joke, though. Um, They got smashed by Davok earlier, but late he seemed to develop more technologies after his first couple losses, and from there, he was able to continue to fight. He was able to fight back better. So he's fighting the Fremen once again. The Fremen army there is okay, but it's, it's a little bit scattered. Um, I actually like Shawnee a lot. I think Shawnee's really fun to use. But yeah, the Demolishers, the Fremen range units, they have that like splash attack. It did obviously get fixed. It's not as buggy as it once was. But man, they melt that smuggler back line. And the Fremen are getting a good push on him all of a sudden. Um, does he have enough chome to call out mercenaries? 
is the question. Yeah, Fremen might be able to win this grind. In the meantime, oh my god, are the Harks going for base hunting? Oh my god. Blessed spawn, e easy five spice. My base dropped a lot faster than I... Same, I thought they weren't going to get it, Daybok. I thought you were going to just farm them for hedge and then win the game. Dude, the Harks are going base hunting, bro. Look at them. I thought they were going to like decap, but like this is going to allow the Fremen to decap. Oh my god, the Harks are just out for blood. Look at the main base. There's a massive chonk army over there. Massive. Um, and the smuggler's force? Oh, is he administrative burdened? He's not. Okay. So yeah, he's hurting a little bit, guys. Doghead could die here. What if we saw the Baron get it? Oh my god. The Baron is just going deep on people's bases. He just runs straight through. He's got that attack speed and those combat drugs. Like, yeah, the Baron's army is dying, but it's doing a shit ton of damage. Doghead is so close to winning, though. He's so close. He's at 27k right now. That is nuts. Uh, in the meantime, obviously, the South is being decapped. Oh, my God! The Harkonnens are, are killing the base! No way! No way he's going to get that off one attack. The Harkonnen DPS is insane! I, I need to take some notes on whatever this guy's... Whatever he's been eating. Dude, Doghead's base gets killed by the Harkonnens. He's out! Oh my god, now it's Dirty Dan versus the Harkonnens. Oh man, oh my god, how did he do that? The Baron sitting on everybody's face. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This Baron player is a tyrant. Oh my god, I'm so happy to see the Baron doing so well. Yeah, this is great. I mean, he's clearly a very good player. So, man, Doghead getting taken out and also... Dude, this is nuts. This is insanity, bro. This is nuts. Combat drugs and Cerberus. Because when he killed the Cerberus, they spawn and they keep doing a shit ton of damage. Fremen versus the Baron, the cannon fight. I know. The Fremen need to rapid expand. They need to just like grab whatever the hell they can on the map. Um, all right. So the Baron is going to probably have the advantage here. Um, yeah, he's inciting rebellion on that. If the Baron gets water regulations to pass, that's going to just own the Fremen. So the only perspective we have now is Dirty Dan. <laughs> my Arrakis, my Dune. I know. This guy is like the... Okay, the Baron isn't even choming. Guys, what the hell is the Baron doing? He's got 8% chom right now. This is wild. I guess he's he's playing a very different playstyle as to how I play them. That's for sure. The Baron stayed under the radar and played the long game. He did. You guys called me the underdog and I took that personally. Yeah, no, he sure did. Dirty Dan is trying. Yeah, you got to get that. Dan, you got to get that. You got to get that. That's going to your only chance for winning on uh, is hedge. Probably you're not going to kill the Baron. That's for damn sure. Um, Dirty Dan is. Uh, yeah, he's negative authority right now. Um, he's producing negative authority because of water regulations. Uh, territories will be free to take soon. Um, on the top, he could. The Baron is probably going to out expand him, though. Yeah, man, we see Doghead's base in flames here. I can't believe it. Yo, I see it now. Baron made Eek has a... Pro yeah, but like those kind of... That play style for the Baron, if the lobby doesn't self-regulate well, the Baron could have just lost the Eek has. But since everybody re reacted well, that's what I was saying in my lobby. I was like, the Baron can win very well if like people regulate the lobby efficiently. Oh, he just got shy looted. Ouch, dude. That feels bad. Mm. Baron, who had 7% wins to vote at all. I know you guys voted against the chunk. We got the Fremen versus the Baron here in the fourth quarter. I mean, dude, is the Baron just going to march to the Fremen base? I feel like he could. He's losing authority from water regulations. Dirty Dan also has three agents not doing anything. He needs to get those guys active. Come on, Dirty Dan. I believe in you. Do it. The Baron, <laughs> the Baron is, a, is a cockroach. Yeah. And you got inactive harvesters. Get those things working, Dan. Oh, my God. I think Dan's sweating right now. I think he's, he's, I think he's a little overwhelmed. He's got a lot of, a lot of things that are just in, in flux. You know, he needs to get, he needs to get his, uh, he needs to get his harvesters back online. He's got two idle harvesters and there's plenty of spice fields to go work on the map now, right? Oh, the Baron's coming, dude. The hammer of justice. It's, it's time. I think the Fremen are in massive trouble. I think this Harkonnen player is just very, very seasoned. Dude, he's just murder hoboing people's bases. Look at him. I think he's just running to the base. And the Fremen are way out of position, by the way. Um, yeah, you better get to your base, dude. He's at negative authority. Oh, no. And he's out of position. He's the deep desert. He needs to get to his base. Dirty Dan. No, don't let it happen to you, too. Oh, no. The chonk. The chonk's coming for that booty. 
Uh, Vladimir, call an ambulance, but not for me, I know. Oh, this is so over. This is so over. The, the He's way out of position, dude. Uh, I think Dan's, Dan's under a little pressure right now, guys. He's going to get behind it, but no, he's, he's, uh, this is so dead. This is so dead right now, dude. Oh, man. That base is just getting the getting the wiener. <laughs> oh, my God. And the Cerberus DPS. I mean, the Baron will be back for round two. Um, Jesus Christ. It's taking so much damage. Although the, the army is dying a little bit quicker this time. But if the Fremen army was in position, this he would have fended this off easy. It's going to be a little bit closer now. Executioners plus Cerberus Doomstack. Yeah, I know. I'm taking notes right now, dude. I'm, I'm learning. I've been playing too much Vernius. I need to, I need to learn again. So Cerberus, yeah, that's right, because you get a big damage spike, right? So you use the Cerberus and the Executioners to proc them. That's really good. Okay, so Siege Tabor is going down. He didn't defend his base quick enough. He was on the wrong side of the map. GG! And the Chonk is going to be claiming victory. I'm the Baron. He did it. All right, so the Baron won in spirit today, guys. GG, well played. All right. Wow, what a game, dude. The Baron did it. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and fire up our Spice Force. Congrats to him. That was just pure Baron punishment. So he's going to be the winner of today's tournament. GG, well played to him. He put up a great fight. The Baron was looking like he was the weakest, one of the weaker ones in the game, but he came back and showed us. That's for damn sure. All right. So, that was insane. That was absolutely insane. I think, uh, how long have we been going? We've been going for three hours? Yeah, all right, we do. Well, five hours is a long time. I think what I'm going to do, so I'm going to call it here for today, because that was just such a good ending to end it on, like perfect, that um, we're going to probably have another, we, we might have another Dune tournament this weekend. I was talking about having two so we could get more people involved, but man, that chonk was just insane. Absolutely nuts. So ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed the event. If you did, please do drop a like on the way out. I know the production wasn't optimal. We got to work with what we can do. But um, yeah, I know the quality was rough. We're going to work on that for next time because there's no spectator tools in this game. So we have to like get people streams. But I'm going to I'm gonna look at the Discord option. But the Discord one is so haggard too. Down with the thickness, I know. <laughs> yeah, all while using his phone for internet. I know. It's so good. All right, guys, drop a like on the way out if you enjoyed it. Once again, thank you all. That was a great time. I'm happy the Baron was able to get in there and get a dub. Um, so, so far, if we look at our Hall of Fame of tournaments, um, let's see here. So we got the first tournament was, uh, these were the early, I was able to win the first tournament only because we people were still learning um, since there's much better players now. But I won the first one. Spielberg won the second one. Khakis won the uh, third one. Spielberg won this one and then uh, the... Harkonnen and Vahuhal uh, have won this one as well. All right, guys. See you later. GG's. Well played. That was super fun. It's his Arrakis for sure, dude. The Baron, he claimed that one. And um, we'll see you guys on the other side. Take care of yourselves. And, uh, you know, my dude, my Arrakis, baby. Cheers.